Tell us about the tattoos. Shut the fuck up, oh, you yeah. little prick. But then I've got the phoenix. Hey, prick. So I'll take it from Bob every day of the week. An absolute disgrace. I'm sure this... no one will mind. Move him out of here, Darren. Ricky had to go over for his fighter because he risked getting abducted and sold into sexual I never said that. <laughs> Both have been rape victims. I'm not watching Frank Buglioni live on Saturday night. <laughs> Out of your mind. Jesus Christ, get yourself a life. He's actually a uh, priest. Yeah, yeah. It's because his brother John Fury eye gouged him. What have I told you all this time? He's going to end up sucked out, fucked out, looking for a hand out. Boxing, um, nutters, messenger group. Oh, they're going to, oh, I'm going to be the king. Jay Bump, you know what I'm saying? Well, hello everybody and welcome to the 477th edition of the Boxing Asylum Nutters podcast. I'm your host Steve Wellings and joining us on the call we have Andy Patterson, a glorious return for Ozzy Smith and Matty DiGelonardo going live on YouTube from 8 o'clock at 8 o'clock every Sunday evening. The Patreon RSS feed updates shortly after the show concludes. And hello to everybody listening through the week on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Don't forget to leave a review on the podcast player of your choice throughout the entire month of June. Nothing less than five stars is acceptable. Packed weekend of action. Lots of value of the weeks come in. A few questions as well. And a few fights next week that we're going to be previewing a bit later on. First of all, let's start off in Australia, the Marvel Stadium in Melbourne. The Marvel, indeed. There was a superhero performance from Devin Haney. Andy, you made the same pick as me last week. And the fight played out pretty much how I expected it to. I thought George Cambosos would have greater pockets of success, but he struggled to get past Devin Haney's jab. It was just a powerful lead shot. It made all the difference. Haney was composed. He was poised. He picked his shots well, and he never let the Aussie gain any momentum or land any of his key shots. Absolutely, mate. I also believe as well, I th- you know, we mentioned it last week, we just didn't know the mental makeup of Haney or the kind of situation on, on in the background. But then, obviously, the last 48 hours before the fight, if we can't post this missing weight, um, before the strip naked, asked to get back on the scales. He's talking absolute bull jive after you know after the weigh-in. Da Haney gets in, uh, gets into the country, and I just think his his mental makeup is just basically enhanced. It just gave him a, a big boost. I thought Cambosis was very wary early on, as you mentioned. The jab just kept him at bay. Haney seemed to me at least run about round three. He seemed to kind of get really in at the groove. He was timing Cambosis. I thought he was missing a couple of wild hooks as well. Uh, the Aussie, the Haney was just doing. You know, he, he did everything as I said last week that he should be doing. You know, box one twos, step him when you have to, keep the distance, grapple and tie up when he had to, which he did that pretty well, or just back off a wee bit, and that's what he did as well. You know, so he had great moments, great moments in the fight, Haney. Um, I'm not buying into the fact is that um, that Camposis and other people are saying it's 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 boring. It was a boring fight. Look, it's boring to the fact is that Camposis couldn't get his shots off. It wasn't until the kind of latter half of the fight he started to kind of get the urgency up to be but to be honest with you. But if you look at round five, I remember um, there was an exchange between the two of them and I think Kenny ended it with a um, a quality uppercut. I think it may be a left uppercut, I think it was. And I was saying right, you know, the class was just different. Round six, right hand jab, you know, maintaining his position, Henny looking, you know, like he's he's just to me, at least, look, he was just involved in any other fight, to be honest with you. Didn't matter, it was like some sort of undisputed title fight, and he's, away, he's, on, a, he's on a way soil. Um, the fans as well, you heard them. You know, you, you know, the fact you couldn't hear them, actually, to be honest, because I just told you, Haney shut down most of the, most of the fight. Um, I will say Cambosis did have a wee bit of success at times, but nothing was sustained. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, in this sense, uh, you know, if he was having to press the momentum uh, more than the latter half of the fight, I thought. Um, but... 
again, the jab by Haney, he was dropping it upstairs, dropping it to the pit of the stomach. Then he was dropping the right hand as well. Um, probably, I'm thinking about probably the best rounds I gave Haney, I gave Campos. I think I, I couldn't give him any more than two rounds, tops possibly. Um, I think maybe round nine was probably one of his better rounds you know, through the entire fight, maybe the 12th as well. Um, but it just Campos was was not able to make adjustments. You know, he just couldn't deal with any defensive capabilities of Haney, who, as I say, one two stepping off to the side, maybe step back grapple. Um, as I say, that as well. But the judges, you know, they gave they gave Campos was it four rounds, so they tried their best at least. But it was a stretch that wasn't it? It was. It really was. To, you know, to be honest with you. And I'll just finish off before I bring the guys in as well. Yeah, I really hope. And it's not going to hurt him, obviously, but I think Camposis should decide to go in a different direction because I just don't see what he can do differently in a rematch. He needs to start quicker, faster. He needs to be willing to t- take the shots because I thought he was kind of very wary of the speed, the timing, everything that Haney had there for him last night. He was very, very kind of wary, as I mentioned, right from the get go. Yeah, but Haney, he was very hard to catch. It says if it's a bone fight, then you've got to change it up. You've got to change it up, but he just couldn't do it. I can't see any different outcome. You know, he's he kind of leads with a kind of head forward over his lead foot. He's got the high guard. He can drop his hands from time to time. Um, so yeah, look, I can't see him going in a different direction. I hope he would. Um, but he's got a rematch clause. It's going to make money for him, especially if it's going to be in Australia as well. Um, because you know, end of day, all, all I can see him doing differently in a rematch is having the high guard. Uh, eat some straight shots, then try and get on the inside. Um, and that's not a slight on the guy. The guy is a ex- undisputed or unified champion. He's done tremendously well to get to this point in his career, but I just thought Haney was just different gravy. And uh, in the end, skills pay the bills, and that, that's what ultimately what, what was proven there last night. Just on that point quickly, Andy, I agree with you. I don't think there's anything Cambos also do differently, although he will fancy that he can do things differently. But if you're Haney, I don't think this is for the good of the division, but you'd be straight all over that rematch. Let's do the same again. Pick up the reverse the paychecks. I'll have his paychecks on the champion now. See you later. I'll move on with a rematch victory. Absolutely. And anything as well, I think if, if, if rumours are right, Campos has made something like $7 million for that fight there last night to Haney. He's just over $2 million, I think. Uh, just as well, as well. I mean, he's, he's signed with the Bob Fyler. Shout out to the Bob Fyler as well, because, you know, <laughs> Bob Adams got my big fight in, in his first deal. Eddie Hearn couldn't get uh, Devin Haney an undisputed title fight. How long did it happen for? Three, four years. So, uh, fair play at that point as well. And, and That's not some... Eddie's fault. Who the fuck wants to watch Devin Haney fight? Well, Hendy, it's... they mate. It's, it's Eddie Hearn's job to make the fights. He's the promoter. He's he's he is the man of the show. You know, so in the day, if he can't get his fight at big fights and he's leaving them, goes to the Bob Father, ninety-five year old, still doing it, still doing the business. Yeah, even Ed. The Bob Father stomping Eddie out of the game before Leonard Ellaby gets a chance to get his feet on him. But uh, we'll we'll speak about Eddie later on, no doubt, uh, before and including uh, Bellew of the Week. I think regarding the game plans, Aussie, Cambosos' team had clearly done their homework. Whenever Haney was throwing the jab, he reaches in, he ducks underneath. Cambosos was trying to whip in those shots to catch him. He was swinging a lot, he was working, he was straining, he was tensing. You could see his frustration. How much was he actually landing? Where was the left hook? Was the right hand landing? He just wasn't able to consistently execute and find any sort of game changer. Exactly that. And I think he struggled throughout the fight, to be honest. And I've got to admit, I think Haney was probably in second gear, maybe third at best. I think he had a lot more to give him. And Andy was right. And it was the easiest way to summarise that. The fact the jab dictated everything. I think what Cambosas did well against Lopez is... He counted extremely well, and he couldn't do anything like that this time round. Uh, and he genuinely struggled. I thought the cards were poor in the sense that they gave Cambosis far too much credit. Uh, the rematch is going to be a really difficult sell because when it was so lopsided, I can't see what Cambosis can do in a short space of time to come and make that fight completely different. Um Andy was right and says he needs to change everything. He needs to start quicker. He probably needs to be willing to, you know... I mean, he ate a lot of shots last night solely, solely off that jab. I think the CompuBox stat said Haney threw over 300 jabs alone. That's a serious amount of uh, of jabs thrown, but he probably needs to be able to take, you know, a bigger shot to potentially land his own. But I thought you could see, it, you know, glimpses of a game plan that was, you know, they'd worked on some stuff but they couldn't adapt and he kind of did the same stuff throughout the whole fight. And, you know, the, the crowd 
you're right, w was somewhat silenced. And and it was all about the levels. You, you know, I, I thought I thought Cambosis would have more success, but I thought it was Haney's fight to lose. I, I think it says it all that, you know, he was, you know, willing to do everything, you know, even go abroad, you know, without, you know, a trainer in his corner. I think you knew he had the confidence to succeed in this fight. And I think it showed in the fight as well that it, it was just so one-sided. Um, Haney's probably never going to be fantastic to watch, more so because, you know, he's going to outclass a hell of a lot of people. And I think it's fair to say that, you know, the true boxers, you know, to a lot of people, unless you appreciate it, they're not the best to watch. You know, I really enjoyed when Tyson Fury beat Vladimir Klitschko because I thought it was an excellent performance by Fury. But in reality, a lot of people hated the fight. And it's because not a light lot happened. And and Haney was excellent last night. And Cambosis, you know, who usually is a bit of a, a pressure fighter and throws a lot of shots, isn't. And just couldn't get into it. And and Haney's going to outclass a lot of people. Um, and ultimately, yeah, if it means he's going to be boring or not as entertaining as others, the game is hit and don't get hit. And it reflected that last night. And... I would love the rematch not to happen next. Um, I think, you know, there's there's no bigger fights to happen. The Cambosis fight next is is not really a big fight, in my opinion, now, given the way the fight, you know, the result happened. There's other fights. Um I'd love to see Haney against Tank, Haney against Lomachenko. There's two fights there straight away. I, I don't know what the full situation is with top rank, but I'm sure Aram said mid uh, midweek that Haney's next four fights will be with top rank. That was obviously including the Cambosis rematch. Um, we've got to assume that still happens, but then there's two people after it who it'd be interesting to see who those opponents will be. Could it be Shaq or Stevenson coming up in weight potentially? Who knows? But... But overall, yeah, it, it was a complete masterclass from Devin Haney last night. And for George Cambosis, um, he taught the talk a lot throughout fight week. If anything, probably got a bit too hyped in everything, you know, coming out, I, I missed the weight on purpose. Well, it can't be that good of a game plan if you're revealing it, you know, 25 minutes, 30 minutes after you've missed weight. So it can't be that good of a game plan if you're deciding to reveal it. I mean, it's you know, for the weight that was over. The son, yeah. the, the I mean, son Zhu comments, you know, you know, you know what he says, he will win, who knows when to fight and when not to fight, you know, mm. so he didn't fight much last night, I can tell you. Yeah, and exactly, and, and I don't see what he can do differently. Um, that saying, you know, what Cambosis did to where he got to was still a fantastic achievement. He's still a good fighter, he just wasn't good enough to beat Devin Haney. Yeah, he can come again, old Cambo Susson like Jade. Good technical breakdown here from JG. He said, it is Eddie's fault. If he wasn't so busy getting pubes stitched into his fringe and swanning about Ooh. on videos, he could have probably got Haney bigger fights. <laughs> Eduardo getting the blame here, Andy. <laughs> love it. Love it. And he mentioned about the, uh, about the about the Botox round, about the eyes and that, but we'll leave that later. We'll leave it to later. What's Matty going on about here? Research it, Andy. Who's this? Lego political no, against Keep dinner. it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. That's that's one of the predictions. That's why I put it in the private chat. It's private, oh you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what happens in the private chat doesn't stay in the private chat. Is this an MMA fight or something like that? No, or it's not it? MMA. So, anyways, all right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, Matty, yeah. I was gonna say I was gonna say to you actually. Across the first kind of four rounds, I thought Haney's defence was pretty watertight. Not a lot was slipping through. Middle part of the fight, Cambosos put the foot down a little bit. Then in the final four rounds, Haney was pot-shotting well, wrapping those long tentacle arms around Cambosos. Whenever he tried to cut the distance and explode, Haney was onto him. He was really good at negating Cambosos' strengths, employing the step and grab when required. And I agree with Ozzy. Hey to Dave said this as well. I felt Haney had another gear or two if it was needed. He almost boxed within himself for portions of the fight. Possibly, but I, or is that is this just what Devin Haney is? I mean, isn't this kind of just what we've seen from him ever? Uh, and it and and for what whatever he does, he seems to nullify what his opponents do, um, output and such. Um, he's a bit of a of a bit of a hugger. Um, he's not much of a pocket fighter. Uh, I, uh, I, I have some curiosities on what, uh, what might happen against some Southpaw opponents. 
Um, at a, and there's a couple of good ones at 135, obviously. But uh, Gambosis was disappointing. I actually thought the 116, 112s were probably closer to what was going on in there. Um, I thought that Cambosis won 2, 12, and uh, I think it was 6 or 7, one of those in there. And I, and I don't know who was doing the announcing for you guys, uh, what, what feed you were watching over there, Steve. But ESPN I was... I was disappointed in Tim Bradley. I thought he was really overselling what Devin Haney was he doing. He does that every ring. other fight, though, mate. He does that every other fight. Woo! And all that type of stuff, you know? it, it was just, it was over the top, man. It, it Like, uh, you know, bruised throat kind of stuff. Uh, that was disappointing. And, and much like when Pacquiao fought Horn in Australia, Steve, there were moments in the fight where I thought that uh, the Australian fighter uh, did something quality in there, and they didn't uh, even so much as mention it in the broadcast. There was a few moments with Horn where he, he shoved Pacquiao up against the ropes, landed a hard punch over the top, and they didn't mention anything with it. And I thought that there were moments of that with Cambosis. Um, he landed uh, a clean one-two in a round, and they said nothing. Uh, he he caught Devin Haney with a good hook when he was turning the corner, didn't say anything. Uh, he landed a three or four punch combination. I think that was in one of those rounds. I said, I thought he snuck um, and, and they didn't say anything uh, uh, about it. And, and I don't like that. And the part of me is saying like, that's because they have to get this rematch in order to get Devin Haney some, some money, because let's be honest. I, and I, I think this is the sad discussion about it is that rematch clause to be in Australia is the only reason anybody would pay to see that fight is because Aussies are rabid about their fighters, so they'll probably still show up to see Cambosis, maybe not in those numbers. Who the fuck is signing up to go see Devin Haney? You know, I mean, Damian Lillard, of all people, seems just absolutely enthused with them, you know, traveling all those miles from the States to go see him fight. But Who's it, that, Mate? It's, it's, it's NBA player. Yeah, he's. It's not a star-making performance. Do you know what I mean? It, um... You see what I mean, though. Right? See, see, people were saying like last night, "Oh, it's a boring fight. It's a boring fight." They should say the same thing about Floyd Mayweather, by the way. No, you know, hold on, I, 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 I'm with you, and I was actually going to go there, but Floyd at the at his bottom weights was fucking people up. Okay. It, he still fought, and, and he always was a, fought in the pocket. He wasn't as much of a holder as as as, as a Haney is, because uh, he always was landing those short right hands, uppercuts, hooks turning out. Uh, he had a lot more tools than Devin Haney has, and he was knocking people the fuck out at 130 pounds. Yeah, I'm gonna say you need to separate pretty boy between money. Haney skipped straight to money here, I think. Yeah, and it's and it's just and it's it's ridiculous. I mean, even go to Floyd against Canelo. He was landing hard shots on Canelo as the much smaller man. And here Haney had a market advantage in size, reach. He uh, clearly could have been able to uh, impose himself. And I'll tell you what, man, when you're fighting away from home, I, I think it's important. I And I think I wouldn't say he got lucky, but if if uh, Cambosis won those last three rounds, he got a draw, right? Um, and, and I don't think that he was that out of reach. He won one of them, the 12th, because Haney, you know, kind of just phoned that one in. But there's with, with Haney, it, it's it's not just about getting the wins. It's it's about about selling yourself. And it's going to take a lot for him to sell that to sell the product that he's putting out there. And. I don't know that there's any much more to say about him. And it, it's not that I don't think that he, it, it's not that I don't think he, he can give anymore. I, I just believe that there's nothing more that he, that he has. I think what you see with Devin Haney is Devin Haney. And it's a very impressive product. I mean, let's, let's not dispute that uh, the fact that George Cambosis is a good fighter. Even if you go through those three wins and you say ifs, ends and buts, right. Um, but there's just nothing with him to sell. When he goes back home, where's his audience at? Um, he's going to be one of those guys that's holding a belt and, and he's fighting on undercards um, it, more often than not because there's nowhere to put him. It, what, he's Haney, not, fighting on, you think he's going to be fighting on undercards now? I think if, no if, I think if he ends up with, uh, with a bigger promoter or a better promoter than Eddie's able to offer him, uh, I think that he's going to be no fighting. Eddie, though, mate. He's no way Eddie. He's yeah, yeah, well, Bob Arum, he's, got Lam, he's got Lomachenko fight and he's got uh, possibly the Ramirez fight if he wants. And maybe even Teofimo Lopez fight. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if he has the dance partner, 
he's going to be able to still get that to, to be, get the number one slot. Well, you know the the first slot bill, uh, billing on it, but I think he's not the kind of guy that's going to be moving tickets. And in these, if he's got these opportunities coming up here, he better do a star making performance because you can be a good fighter and be totally forgotten. But I personally believe that Southpaws are going to give him fits and a physically imposing Southpaw is going to be the death of Devin Haney. And there will be some refs who won't get him, let him get away with as much holding. Eddie's literally got no fights from, so you better not join the zone ASAP. I can tell you that. I bet they could work out with Golden Boy to do Ryan Garcia. Who gives Garcia a fuck about Ryan fight. Garcia, man? I, I want to see Ryan Garcia against Tank. Bonta. Yeah, that's what I think is going to happen. Next, I want to see Tank absolutely separate that guy from reality because he he's another one, clout chasing after the fight. See, and, and that's that's why Haney might actually come out 135 pounds unscathed. He might beat Tank because Tank is, is big, burly, but he's not tall, right? And, and Lomachenko, uh, he's a good mover, but he's not a big guy. Stepping up into those higher weights, I think that's when you might run into the physically imposing guys, the southpaws that, I'm lo- that, that I would say are the ones that are going to be giving him a hell of a time. Anyway, he's waiting, he's waiting for Google email champion, the undisputed champion, especially two years ago. We kind of knocked the guy, you know. He's been in the business. End of the day, is this somebody has backed him to say well, he's going to go in there and put on a, oh, not so much a clinic, but he's going to win it on points basically. And that's what hey, he's done. I'm hey, sure done. and and I'll tell you like, what, with him being up with, the, if he's doing top rank and he hangs with them for a while, gets through this and then uh, wants to do Loma and then moves up to 140, um, if he can get himself mentally where he needs to be again, fuck, Tio, give him a hell of a time. Yeah, I don't necessarily disagree with you, Matty. I think he'll be a problem for anyone, Haney, because of his attributes and his size and his style. But me picking him to beat Cambosos, I just thought he had the wrong style for Cambosos. I think Haney was being underrated in the context of this matchup in particular. But overall, I don't necessarily disagree with you. I don't think Haney's amazing. And there are types of styles of fighters who will give him a hell of a lot of problem. I mean, we, you know, the fact that Lenares caught him, someone might check, check that chin again. Someone might be able to get him past the jab. Fighters are going to give him all sorts of problems. So... I'm not necessarily saying that he's going to go on and dominate, but I mean, I thought Cambosos, though, Matty spoke quite well afterwards. It's not easy to address a massive crowd, a home crowd like that, but we're not too interested in this contractual rematch, are you? Not in particular, but I I think that's where the money is going to be for both of them, because again, who, um, there's uh, how much money is on the table for Devin Haney? Uh, He's just not a big dollar fighter, and I think he could find himself in a position kind of like Terrence Crawford did, although not as talented, clearly, um, where his his demands um, outreach um, what, what he's selling at that point in time. And I think, obviously, Crawford had a shit ton more to sell than fucking uh, than, than uh, Haney. I mean, uh, Crawford is you know, knocking people out from Gambo on up. Uh, Lord Jacob says only Shakur beats Haney, in my opinion. I disagree. I think Tank's the best of the bunch. But we'll we'll see. Let's see who beats who. Let's see who fights who. Before we go on to the undercard, I know Ozzy's itching to talk about Lucas Brown. Andy, one thing I was going to mention was I thought the referee was a little bit fussy for my taste, taste rather. But it was like an amateur ref intervening, little hand movements, directing traffic all the way through the fight. I mean, he did fine. He wasn't really a major problem. But, you know, all this business and the hands are going up and down. And you're like, fuck off, will you ref? And let him, let him fight. <laughs> Um, I kind of mind to be honest with you, mate. No, no, I think about it. Who was the referee again? I know the judges. Two were European. One was one. One was Canadian. Hector um, Afu was the ref, and we were going through the the judges last night on the the Patreon call and that. And there was Benoit Russell, and I was a bit concerned about the Polish judge. He'd done a lot of Polish domestic stuff, but mm. I think the, the guy who, who did the one eighteen, one ten. I think that was the Polish guy. He was the closest for me, so he was spot on. But it was it was Hector Afu was the referee. He was, right. he was fine. I'm not criticising him. I've seen worse, but I just think he was a little bit fiddly at times. And he has a stupid name. <laughs> Hector Afu. Uh, well, I suppose uh, uh, that means in Scotland it means you're pretty drunk, Afu. But uh, no, to be honest, I, I didn't have too much, too much issue, to be honest with you. Maybe it was a bit pernickety, uh, possibly, but you get refs like that, especially inexperienced refs anyway. Um, the ones that really bug me, though, is especially when we get them in the UK, see when we get these European title fights and you've got a foreign referee for like Finland and that, and <laughs> his English is pretty poor and he's, he's basically talking to the talking to the um, the boxers by hand signals. That does me fucking does my boxing. That's the one thing that needs to get binned straight away. But uh, no, I didn't have too much issue with the ref to be honest with you last night, mate. 
Like Massimo Barrovecchio, Andy. Yeah, Barrovecchio. <laughs> yeah, the wee rat. He just looks like a wee rat with that face and that, that kind of shitty fucking beard and ratty eyes and fucking long nose that he's got. Uh, him, he was one of them. But it was like, remember the guy in the, in the Ben McClellan fight as well? He spoke no English. Oh, no the English. French he was another one. Mm. Aye, he was talking. Oh, again, he was talking by by fucking hand, the hand signals. Just, it just isn't good enough. I think um, as well because we'll, we'll get on to it as well. We had um, Ogawa against Cardina. It was an English mm. judge, I think it was, or English ref. Fucking does they speak Japanese, you know? So there we are. I need to up the referee game onto the undercard then, as we shall go. Didn't see Maloney or anything. All I did see, Ozzy, was this amazing knockout. Who would have thought this was going to happen? Junior Far. Any projections towards world class he might have had are going to be flying out the window. Can't believe he got knocked out by Lucas Brown in 2022, but it was some knockout. Still carries the power, old Big Daddy. It, it was unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, the first knockdown, <laughs> Far was on on the um, just on the floor, like shaking completely. He's looking for contact know, lenses, man. I was worried oh, about him. Oh, yeah, he was, he was all over the place. And then, Samoan thought, recovery. Yeah, I, I thought I thought it was pretty poor from the referee actually that he allowed it to continue because Far was in no state there. I mean, he was he was dead on his feet. But the one thing Brown has always been able to do is punch, and his right hand, I would argue, is as good as anybody's in that heavyweight division in terms of power alone. Um, I mean, it says it all. You know, Chagayev had a serious chin and. When he knocked Chagayev out, that was, you know, your power is legit there in terms of, you know, serious, you know, a serious dig on him. And, I mean, I hated Lucas Brown at one point. I didn't care he got banged out off Dillian White. It was when he got fucking beat off Dave Allen. And I thought that would be the end of Allen. And then fucking Brown comes over and gets bodied by him. And then he got beaten up off that bloody rugby player, Paul Gallatin, um, which... He, he then claims, actually, he got did to the back of the ear twice. And looking at it back, he's probably got an argument there. Anyway. Um, so does Far. Yeah. yeah well, I disagree on that. No, I, di I disagree on the Far one because the first one I just thought was an ear shot. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I thought the second one, Far just turned his head into it. And it wasn't, you know, like an obvious, you know, back of the head shot. And Far was no, you know, he was absolutely gone. So, you know his senses would have been scrambled and he just turned into it. There was no, you know, like nothing, you know, it wasn't an obvious behind the head shot in my opinion. Um, but what said it all is the fight before it. And I don't know if Brown is back on the juice or something like that, but he boxed. I mean, fuck knows who he was. Samoan guy who lives in Australia. The fight before, Figer Opalu um, for some WBA Oceana title. And he'd lost... Yeah, I think they were seven in and he'd lost a few of the rounds. But one thing Brown did show is that he had a bit of punch resist resistance. Um, so I thought, you know, and then I follow him on his socials and I forget who he'd been in camp with, but it's another one of these, um, I think it was either Australian or Kiwi heavyweights and he'd had some legit sparring. So he was clearly taking it seriously. And look, it showed in the performance. He came out and ultimately that's all Brown needs to do now. Look to land early. He's probably not going to go the 12 rounds every time. But that win last night has, without a doubt, got him probably another one or two opportunities at a fairly decent level. Because, let's have it right, he fucking banged Junior Farr and his performance was a hell of a lot better than Joseph Parker's. I mean, you've got to look at it now and think, what the fuck was Joe Parker doing to go to the distance with this guy? And Brown has just gone in and just completely obliterated him. I think somebody said in the first round, it was a 90 to one shot for that to happen. That is fucking unbelievable. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable, someone said. 90 to one. I mean, I'm not sure on that. I never saw the prices, but 90 to one is Brown just was, insane. Just Brown to win was paying like 10 or 12 to one. 12, I slipped a 12 beat there, one. Matty. Slipped a beat there. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I saw, I mean, I saw it and thought, it's a big prize for someone who can really punch. But then I thought, but Brown, he's 43, and he got banged out off a former rugby player. Exactly. That then ended it for me. You just couldn't confidently back that. Uh, but, yeah, look, that was – fuck Devin Haney and his undisputed win. Lucas Brown was the story of the night. Um, and I would, it wouldn't shock me now, you know, 
if he comes over and gets a fight with, you know, a UK heavyweight, whether it's someone like Fabio Wardley. Dylan White. Um, he wants Dylan White to fight, isn't it? Yeah. Word. Well, the rematch. Um, yeah, he already beat him, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, White, he White's probably got the... That was the best knockout of his career, that, against Lucas Brown. Well, Dave Allen would be after him as well, isn't it? Was no one the rematch with Dave Allen? Oh, I don't want to see that. God, they, no. Man. They I have tell to put him in fight. with the winner of Dubois and fucking Trevor Bryan. One I thing he does, him. though, right, with that power he's got, he will pose a risk to anybody. I wouldn't be shocked if they look at him as an opponent for Joe Joyce ahead of the Parker fight. Whoa. You know, he's he's got that win now, um, you know, over Junior Far. Look, regardless of how he went in as a massive underdog, and you know, people are talking about him. He, he's he's gone. He's put, took absolutely no damage whatsoever. That Parker fights in five weeks. They're still looking for an opponent, as far as I'm aware. It wouldn't shock me if you know they put in an offer to him to fight Joe uh, to fight Joe Joyce in you know five weeks' time. That wouldn't surprise wouldn't me. Wouldn't be too Would bad considering be... Brown just I was got a say... win. I mean, in the yeah, context of I mean. boxing. Yeah, would that be deemed acceptable? Given that you know, if he's going to fight. Joe Parker in, you know, at September, October time, um, would it be deemed acceptable? The opponent I was thinking of for someone like um, Joe Joyce would have been like a, a Sergey Kuzmin. But given that Brown's just come off that win, yeah, we, we probably all know which way it would go. But coming off the back of that, it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever in this day and age that they go for, uh, you know, potentially look at Lucas Brown. But, yeah, you, you've got to applaud the KO. It was a brutal KO. And I think I've seen somebody in the um, somebody in the chat say it looked like he was on Spice. And having seen many people on Spice in Manchester on a uh, walking, walking through the city centre in the morning, it's a fucking great comparison because he was absolutely all over the place on the deck. That sounds lovely, Oz. Spice on your cornflakes, Matty, in Manchester. Oh, fuck me, man. I was, you watched me state me trying to get up out of bed at New Year when I heard the cargo get opened. But I was like, the fucking Junior Far trying to get up out of bed. <laughs> oh, I need a fucking bite, man. <laughs> Jesus. I'm it that was the highlight sick. of the undercard, Andy. That was all that I saw. Um, I seen Maloney, mate. Uh, I forget, but one, the one with the knockout win, um, it was okay. Um, that, that was yeah, a that was highlight. great right hand that he, he landed on there on, on Felite to, uh, there. Uh, I was, I yeah, was surprised. But... I've never known like, Maloney as much of a puncher. Yeah, now he's wanting the, the winner of Donair against Inouye. Uh, I, th- I think I said to you guys last week, I think he's hit his ceiling. I think he's hit his ceiling and D- Donair he's hit his head. at this point in his career. Yeah, he better be careful if, I can, if, yeah. if he goes in with the uh, if he goes in with Inouye, uh, he's going to hit the ceiling fan. One thing I did notice as well, that, uh, you know, David Nyka, uh, the former kind of highly decorated amateur for Australia, I noticed he kind of fought in a five-rounder. Uh, you know, an odd number of rounds considering like the rest of them are either eight, six or four rounders it was on the undercard. I just thought that was kinda of weird there. Wasn't like one of those weird hybrid WSB type things, was it, between amateur and pro or um no. don't think so, mate. I was a pro mm. pro fighter, um to be Stranger. honest with you. It was an awesome five twos. Under- Dude, uh, it well, was an Australian was undercard, guys. Come on. <laughs> like, why are you trying to fucking rationalize it? It was an Australian undercard. They are Yeah, it was a five rounder. Right? The women's was five two. See, that's a bit odd, Andy, that is. But I Lucas by uh, Lucas Sausage Roll Brown rolls on again, forty three year old. Um it's just all about the way, you know, big big upsets. Would you say ninety one he was to win by knockout or what just to win the fight? Ninety one, ten one, fucking hell. Twelve to one just to 12 win. Twelve to one. Jesus. Yeah, Christ. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Insane price. Um since somebody else another opponent, you know, they've not got chance to um, you know, the time's not on his side. Lucas Brown, Fraser Clark. Well, I, I was going to say as well, I mean, that was for two bobbles there last night as well. There was an Oceania, mm. a WBA belt, an IBF, Australasia belt well, on the line. Br- so that's going to be ranking Brown, points for him as well. Well, B- Brown was ranked, went into that fight ranked 15 with that's the right. WBA. That win will probably bump him up, what, yep. a couple of places. Yep. So, yeah, if, you know, they've not got time on the side for Fraser Clark. So that will be a, a decent opponent, actually. You know, what would it be, Clark's that second... Second or third fight. fight. Aye, aye, aye. Second or third fight, yeah. I, th- I think, you know, with time not on his side, it's probably a fight that makes sense, actually, uh, for Fraser Clark. You know, unless he's going to, you know, he-, he can't really cherry-pick opponents. You know, he's not got that time on his side. So, yeah, bang out Lucas Brown, go and get yourself a, a high ranking and then look to move on from that. But, 
Yeah, like I said, that win last night has got guaranteed him another what couple of paydays at least, and, and mm. fair play to him. Fair play. I mean, you know, if he was on the juice, I don't know what it was for because he still had a gut on him, and he was hardly, you know, agile on his feet. But he just played to his strengths, and yeah, Far had no answer whatsoever, and fuck knows what he's going to do now because that was clearly a fight, you know, for for Far to look good in, and. Well, yeah. I can't see him uh, begging for that rematch either. What about Bacoli for Brown? Yeah. Well, th- why not? I, I just I, I see... Mean, I'm sorry, the, I was going to say, the only the only thing with that is that who the hell is going to put that on? You know, Bacoli was picked for Yoka because there was probably some sort of appeal, you Mediocre, know. Mediocre, mate. Mediocre. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just can't see, you know. I mean, what promoter's going to think, yeah, Martin Bacoli, Lucas Brown. That's a fight I want to promote. In reality, the only way it'd appear is if it was on, you know, like, um, you know, like a pay per view card, and it was just randomly matched. It's something Hearn well, would put on that actually. Well, well exactly. Randomly let me, match. Let me, let me, exactly, and let me yeah. argue, Oz, that like it, there, there's an yeah. audience for the Alan Babiches of the world, right? And I think that this kind of fits into that world of uh, of that. It's just people love fucking heavyweight trash fights. I, I love them personally well, okay. a great deal. Make, make Lucas Brown against Tony Mediocre then. Mediocre needs to uh, get her, um, uh, 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 well, I suppose her I want to see a, I want to see him in against a, a guy that's going to go in there and throw punches, not somebody that's going to, you know, do what the French have done every time a country well, has quit. invaded them. Quit. Retreated, you know, whatever you want to call it. Work with the enemy. Get him, uh, get Babbage back up at heavyweight then. Babbage Brown. That yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, Dude, that, I tell so you what, fun. If, Luke, if Lucas Brown landed that right hand on Babbage, he'd fucking knock his block off. My he God, that pole banger, guy. that pole bashed up Babbage. Never mind Brown, who'd have about 40 or 50 pounds on him, and his power is legit. Fuck me. Babbage should be uh, banged into next week. Ed- Edward? Edward, we, we we know you're listening, man. We 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 know you always listen. Make that happen. Des has, we, we Des will... has got another good show. Nathan Gorman, realistic that as well. Pretty sure I know when Gorman was with Warren, they explored that Brown fight uh, and just couldn't get it over the line. I think that's a realistic one for Wasserman to put together. Not too expensive. And again, what they're going to do with Gorman, you know, like that opponent he's in with, I think, is it God. next week or the week after? Yeah. He appeared in a fucking Dennis Hobson car park, him, and he's now <laughs> headlining on Channel 5. The Br- Gorman Brown, you know, G- uh, Gorman Clark, uh, not Gorman Clark, Brown Clark, Brown Wardley. You had me sold on Babbage, Gaz. I, I think Babbage is the fight. You're like, we Mate, said that. Well, like, they're, they're going out. Well, they're going after Oscar Rivas, aren't they? Which is not going to end well for Babbage. So, Rivers. Oscar yeah. Rivers. I'd still like a rematch for that dude that he just fought to. What the hell was that dude's name that he fought, what, two weeks ago? The Polish guy. Yeah, that was, fuck, that was a great fight. Mm-hmm. That was fun as fuck. I thought he was mm-hmm. French. No, no he was Polish. 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 Oh, yeah, okay. Right, let's move on then, shall we? Yeah, Des said far as an English title level kid, Brown beat him, so get Brown in with Wardley, Clark or Gorman. Ozzy's right, I don't think it's next week, I think it's the week after that Gorman opponent is is absolute dog shit, so Wasserman are going to have to step up their game. Just to remind everybody, you listen to episode 477, Boxing Asylum Nutters podcast. Matty's here, Ozzy's with us, so is Andy. Let's have a look in the chat, the usual scumbags are hanging around. Let's give them a shout out by name, starting with Slappy Gilmore, M. Lithgow, Michael Thompson, Adam Hughes. Johnny, yeah, no super chats yet. Johnny Horsecock Nelson, Sad Ken's there, Big A. Stephen Hill, Marty Smith, Chase Athletics, MB. Uh, CHR's with us as well. Jim McDonald Boxing, hiding behind his fake name. Uh, Chris Butler, Des, of course. Uh, who else have we got here? That we want to give them a shout out. Uh, Adam Hughes, he's got a shout out twice. Fair play to him. Yumi Yappe, Cal Cheds, Ben Russell. Uh, let's have a couple more before we move on to the Stephen Fulton, Daniel Roman fight. Dale Baker's here. And so is, last but by no means least, MB and Take Ames is there as well. So is JG. Good to see him with us. Right, let's go on to the Showtime card then, Matty. Where was this taking place? The Armoury, Minneapolis, Minnesota. David Morrell gets a good turnout there. They enjoy his fighting style. We'll talk about him shortly. Let's start off with Stephen Fulton, Matty. He isn't the biggest puncher in the world, but he has an excellent work rate. Quality jab, lovely left hook, great timing. I've been following him since the Isaac Avalar fight, and he looks like the complete package for me. Easy on the eye, does most things really well. 
he's just a fantastic champion and a fighter. And Daniel Roman, he's a quality boxer. He pushed Ak Medaliev close, but he was clinging on to remaining competitive, I thought, in the second half of that fight. I think Roman is probably one of the more underrated fighters the last six or seven years. So I rate this win uh, quite highly. Um, I think Andy's going to rate it quite highly because I know that he picked Roman uh, to win. But uh, Fulton, um, just showing that he's a chameleon. You know, uh, he chose to fight on the inside um, in his last two fights, and he didn't want to really do that with Roman. So he he boxed from the outside. He landed uh, clean right hands, put his punches together, uh, nullified most uh, everything that Roman wanted to do. Sands a couple of his uh, sneaky little uppercuts here and there. Uh, and Fulton, um, showing that you don't necessarily have to be a, a big puncher to put on a good show. Uh, definitely, um, you know, you know, against, I, you wouldn't call it a star making performance, but his stock only goes up with that. Uh, you're looking forward to where he might go next. Uh, he's big at the weight. So featherweight, not going to be an issue for him. Uh, if he, if he chooses to take that, if he chooses to take that step and you know, you compare that with, uh, with, with what Haney did in the ring, uh, you know, boxing from the outside and, uh, just is, Fulton showed that you can really do it uh, with, with, a, with a lot more um, uh, eye-catching shots and, and you can get the crowd into it more. And um, and, I, and I don't know, um, Steve, I'd, I'd be curious for the guy's uh, opinion on this. Um, did Fulton do uh, what he did against a better opponent than Haney? I don't know. Um, he was a way wider favorite, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm loving a bit of fall to me. I know Andy is as well. Roman, he did enjoy a little bit of success, which you're going to expect. He's a former unified champion. He's an excellent body puncher. But to have a chance of victory, Andy, you have to disrupt Fulton's pace. You have to disrupt his rhythm. You've got to drag him out of his comfort zone. Brandon Figueroa did that to a certain extent. Not enough to get the win, obviously. Roman's just not that kind of fighter. He's more patient, accurate, throwing in the margins. He just needed that bit of urgency. But I don't think he could have done anything different last night. I think he was just always going to be second best, and he knew it. Yeah, I mean, I guess qualify my, my, you know, my comments of last week, really, because, you know... I looked, maybe I underrated, or underrated Fulton's win against uh, Figueroa. But some people actually had Figueroa winning, to be honest with you. I mean, if you look at the fight, it was very tight. You know, as I say, maybe the latter half, it, some people thought Figueroa maybe won it. And I just thought maybe the pressure that he was getting put under, I think to myself, well, if Roman can maybe match that pressure. And I, I think Roman's a far better combination punch than what Figueroa is. But again, it comes down to Figueroa's size. He's always a big brute. And I know Fulton tried to get he tried to get a rematch with Figueroa, but I think he's got him weight to 126, I believe. So look, at the end of the day, I agree with every Matty just said there as well. You know, for me, Fulton is now easily the best of the weight division. You know, Akmadali fight is obviously next. That's really likely to be very competitive. But as I say, the Roman fight against Akmadali was also close and competitive. So again, maybe I was just giving Roman far, far, far too much credit, thinking, hey, right, okay, you know, his experience good combination puncher, he's not a bummer of any sort, ex-world champion, I expected him to be more competitive as such, but at the end of the day, I thought Fulton pissed that out of the park, he easily won it wide on the cards as far as I'm concerned. I read some comments online that apparently um, Fulton, no Fulton, sorry, um, Roman got let down by his manager uh, in regards to uh, sparring partners and that, maybe kind of, you know, slumming back on the budget a wee bit, mm. but, you know, and, you know, fights like these, you shouldn't be kind of, like, slumming back, you should be kind of, like, giving the best option that you've got, if it means, like, maybe lose a wee bit of money, then, you know, end of the day, that's what's going to come to, but, the say is, look, that's Roman's, obviously, what, 31, 32 he is now, I think that was his best chance, really, to get back in the mix, it hasn't, it hasn't happened for him, it wasn't a better, he was very, very classy actually, you know, post-fight, you know, wished him all the best, now, he, he admitted himself he was he was a class below, but Fulton near the level last night, and I want to finish off by Fulton by saying this, that's three fights now, back-to-back, to back, uh, back now, he's had actually fought, I'll probably say, top five ranked guys in that division, two of which were belt holders, so if he beats Ak- Akmedaliev, I think he's without doubt, Stephen Fulton, possibly, if he fights him this year at least, I have a bit of an issue because I think he's with the zone at Madalev. I'm not too sure mm-hmm. at this point. But if we get that this year, Stevie Fulton will be my fighter of the year if it happens. And he will also be knocking on the door, probably bring up the top 10 pound for pound if he does that as well. So, you know, fair play to Stevie Fulton, man. Absolutely tremendous performance. You know, if you start to finish, he was absolutely on the ball. Um, I thought there was moments, I said to his last week as well, as I don't think he wanted to stand in the pocket for too long and hold his feet. 
But as that fight kind of wore on, I thought his confidence grew, and I thought the moments he was standing in the pocket, he was letting his hands go, the right hand, as Matty mentioned. Um, the skills was absolutely tremendous. I, says, I think just the lack of power is probably going to put doubts, especially my mind from time to time when it comes to comes to points. But if he's boxing like that, clearly winning fights, he's going to be hard to beat. And I think if he wins the, the, the unified title, maybe stay about for a, for, for a wee bit longer because it could be come down to the fact that if he goes up in weight, that's where he might come a cropper because of that lack of power. But the skills, the footwork, the timing, it's just, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Fantastic fighter. Well, some yeah. guys get become better punchers when they go up. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's very lanky at 122 pounds. So, I mean, he might fill out, get a little bit more in his legs and and, uh, and uh, get a better pop at him actually moving up. If you look at some of his punches he's been throwing there last night, actually, he kind of throws it on the move. So, that's what I kind of think that maybe if he can sit on his shots a wee bit, it could, you know, just that technique. But I well, just think because his footwork's so good that he can actually throw on the move. But as I say, if you throw on the move, you've not got that, you've not got that base to kind of really generate the power, generate that torque. But again, it's just, he doesn't really need to do that, I suppose. If he, if he's, if he's fights like that for 12 rounds, he doesn't need to worry about power. He's stamina the too, Andy, man. Yeah. He, can do, he gets stronger as the fight yeah. goes on. I think it, when he, he fills out and he hits his peak, his prime, which he's arguably getting into now, he's going to be a phenomenal fighter. Absolutely. What is he, 23, 24 at this point? You still think he's got a wee bit of groan to do. As my, you might be say as well. Maybe he has shown a wee bit off himself to make 122. 27. Well, and, 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 and Roman and Figueroa have great beards, mind you, too. Well, Figueroa is haven't... massive, though, man. Figueroa is yeah. huge compared to he what can Roman punch, was. too. And, exactly. And, and I, yeah, I mean, Roman takes takes a hell of a punch. We've always seen him take a good punch, too. So, I mean, it's it's tough to say, like, you're punching those guys. Eh, you know, you're probably not going to knock out regardless. Yeah, yeah, without doubt. But as I say, if, if, if he beats Ahmed Ali of next, hopefully we didn't get the you know, pish fucking politics. But Eddie's doing his best to burn Bridges left, right, centre these days, so who knows? Maybe Ahmed Ali might need to do a Devon Haney. Maybe need to jump ship and you know, go to the other side of the street and try and get this fight made. But as I say, if it gets made this year, fantastic. If Fulton wins it, fight of the year for me, possibly pound for pound, top 10 as well. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that. I think the instructions Roman's corner gave him going into the 12th round was just one of survival rather than winning the fight. And as the lad said, Roman was class in the post-fight interviews. He spoke very well. He talked about the respective performances between Ahmed Aliyev and Fulton. He definitely thought Fulton was the best at the weight. The scorecards were accurate in num in number sense, but in reality, they were harsh in respect of Roman's efforts. I always think you put all that in and you get one round on a card and no rounds on two of them. I'm not saying they're inaccurate, do, you do feel sorry for the loser. Matty, just before we move on, just on the Ahmed Aliyev fight, something tells me he's not he's aligned to the zone, but he's like with a different manager or maybe a smaller promoter. I don't think he's signed with Eddie. I think that there's a chance he could go over to PBC if need be. And like Daniel Roman, Matty, you would say that Fulton would have the edge over Ahmed Aliyev. I would think so. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, like Andy said, he's he's knocking on the door of uh, pound for pound status at this point in time, and it's going to take a very special fighter to beat Stephen Fulton. And uh, as much as Akhmadaliyev is a quality fighter, I, I don't think he's that level that that uh, it's going to take to to bring uh, Fulton into deep waters. Talking of quality fighters, before we move on to Joe Cordino, what about the undercard? There was only one fight on the undercard. They showed the tank. Um... Rolly replay from last week. David Morell knocking out Calvin Henderson. Morell has this dodgy title, but he's clearly world class on the eye test, Matty. He can punch, he's exciting. We just need to see him in against someone now who can test him, I think, the distance, push him at a pace into the later rounds, and then we'll truly see what Morell has in his locker. There was a whole lot of good to take from David Morell. And, and you know, Calvin Henderson wasn't uh, much of a test. Uh, he, he decided to hang on the ropes for most of the fight against Morell, which is a big mistake uh, because he puts his to get, uh, punches together uh, while still seeming reasonably patient about doing the whole thing. And um, what was that? Uh, was it a sixth round stoppage, Steve? I'm trying to. It was four round? Was four it? Round. Fourth. Mm -hmm. the, what are, the round before it. Uh, the, the, the end of the round, the ref should have stepped in there. there yeah, was, I think so. Uh, his his head was bouncing back and forth like a uh, like a, a, a Pez dispenser. It was absolutely ridiculous. Um, and uh, but uh, hopefully Henderson's okay. Uh, it, the way that uh, Morel puts his punches together is tremendous. He's got uh, every punch that you can think of. When he works behind the jab, um, he is definitely a, a much more dangerous fighter because he does uh, you know, leave himself open. And I think you noticed that, Steve. And uh, good on Al Bernstein for picking it out uh, early as a, a key to the fight. 
Morel is susceptible to a left hook, especially during the exchange. And if he gets uh, runs into a guy that knows how to wipe his nose with that shot, that's going to be some trouble. Yeah, I agree with that. I think at the moment he's fighting to the level of his opposition. Uh, Matty mentioned there, Andy, Calvin Henderson. He wasn't yeah. really in the fight. To his credit, he never no. stopped trying. He landed some snappy counters. He had a few moves. He wasn't a complete bum. Fought through a bad cut as well, a persistent cut, if the commentators are to be believed. But it was only going to end one way. And at least Morel doesn't play with his food. He gets rid of these overmatched uh, opponents. They're struggling to match him at the moment. He's going to have to fight somebody decent or push that WBA ranking to try and, if not get the Canelo fight, get somebody else in like a fake unification because he's not going to have people knocking down the door to fight him, I don't think. Yeah, to be honest, he is a bit of a you know, violent guy at the end of the day. But as I said, I think um, he needs to take a step back sometimes as well. I think he was kind of like over, over trying to press. Was just trying to kind of over impress, I think, last night. Yeah. To be fair, I think the, the atmosphere in the armory last night was fantastic. So if he's going to be building there in his local base in Minneapolis, that, then you know, fair play to him because he's going to earn some, some decent money there. It was a good crowd. Yeah, I agree with your comments. That you just need to see him, it was six or seven fights. You need to see him tested now of some sort, get some... Game, my favourite word, resistance. You know, you go through the WBA rankings, you go got Berlinga's fighting next week, I think. Don't know what's happening with John Ryder these days. Maybe Ozzy can maybe follows him with that one. Khalid Plants, maybe looking for a dance partner as well at some point. Um, Anthony Darrell also kicking about here as well. But there's a lot to like about the guy. And, you know, as I say, the guy he was fighting there last night, what was his name? Uh, Henderson. I really thought he could have he could have been bailed out at the end of the third round because he was getting tagged over a shop. Head was bouncing. I thought Pabon was going to step in at one point as well with like 20 seconds to go in the round. Somehow he rode it out. I don't know how he did it. Um, and he answered the bell for the, you know, for the fourth fair play to him. Tried his best, I suppose. Not, but we said this last week. I had no idea who, who Henderson was. I hadn't seen him before, to be honest with you. So, Morel did what I expected him to do. You know, beats up the guy in front of him. But I agree with everything else you just said. He needs to be stepped up. It's just it's incrementally now. He just needs a step up, really, of some sort. Um, I'm just trying to kind of like think of, the, think of some names. But super middleweight's kind of like thinning out again. Um the Russian can't fly anywhere. So Pavel Selyanin, he's a decent enough fight, fighter, but he can't fly anywhere. Lemieux's been been iced. Um, Benavidez is a good fight, man. David Benavidez. Yeah, but gone. is it really going to happen? No, Benavidez is going to be wanting this. Uh, I don't know what it is about his situation just now at all. Actually, now I think about it, but they're all going to be I hanging don't... for Canelo again, aren't they? Like the same well, old. This is, this, this is pish, man. You know, day, if you're all going to sit for a gravy train. You need to be active at the end of the day because if you're going to sit waiting for that fight to happen and then you get the opportunity and you, you don't do shit during that fight, then, you know, what the fuck? But just stay active. But I'm looking at some of these names here. I see Shane Mosley's pulling up number 11 here in the WBA. Shane Mosley Jr., fuck me, man. Um, Desmond Nicholson, they know who that is. Rocky oh, Demond Nicholson, yeah. He oh, fought... Um, he fought Belanga, didn't he? And, and somebody else. He's a bit of Jesse Hart, I think he fought. A bit of right. a puncher. You've got... Um, Rocky Fielding, number six. You got Pat, <laughs> McCro you got Pat McCrory, number seven. Or oh, sorry, Padraig McCrory. Give me his full oh, Irish Padraig title. McCrory. I know yeah. Padraig McCrory. He's a good friend of mine. But yeah, levels. And then there's one that I watched last week. Some of you might not be aware of him, but the the Cuban based out of Germany just now, Uslis Iglesias. Any of you heard of him? No. No. Well, he I think he had a win either last week or the week of four against Isaac Chalemba. Beat him over twelve rounds. Who who beats him? But I schooled him for 12 rounds, actually, um, to be honest. But at the end of the day, Chalimba's Chalimba these days, my man. He fucking, he's a 12-round journeyman these Can days. you call that Cuban, Andy, you, you were mentioning? Uh, well, this is Iglesias. I'll Iglesias. send you his box the right room, mate. I'll send it to Julio you. Julio Iglesias? Be, you should be stopping this version of Chalimba, though. Well, he was there to survive, to be honest with you, mate. He was there to survive. He's backing off. <laughs> That's but... his career. Exactly. There you go, mate. I'll put his box record in the, in, the, in the chat there for you. Okay, thanks. And we're getting all sorts of super chats rolling. Yeah, yeah. Like mad, Steve. I'm going to give him a shout here. Don't worry, I'm getting on to them now. Dungino's throwing in 899. He said, I should be in an AA meeting, but I'm here with you, lads. So good to get, uh, good to see he's getting his priorities in order. You, you better off with us on a Sunday evening. Maybe Ricky Graville will put an arm around you and lead you down the righteous path. <laughs> he's thrown in 449. <laughs> he will help you through, Dungino. <laughs> well, I'm, up, I'm up the half here just doing Dungino. So if you want a wee, wee sniffer, I'll pack, I'll yeah. pack you up, Amy. Don't worry about it. His name is Andy and he's an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm Johnny Horse Cotton Nelson as well. Uh, sorry if there's any background noise from me, by the way. A big fucking tractor driving past. So um, 
There you go. I don't know what they're up to out there. Johnny Horscott Nelson's running 179. Shout out to everyone hiding behind fake names. <laughs> Johnny Horscott Nelson. Yeah. Doing his best. I watched his video during the week there with Porky. Yeah, it's man. good, isn't it? it? Was fucking hilarious. I was pushing. Was it, it was like 10 minutes later I realised it wasn't Porky's video. I was like, oh, fucking brilliant, man. Brilliant. Right, put your, put your channel address into the chat if you want, Johnny, if you're able to. I don't know if you can do that or not and people can go and subscribe to you because that was good crap, man. I don't know if it's the same person who does the Jim McDonald account, but they're uh, they're flying behind these fake names anyway. Uh, so, um, oh, hey. oh, look, here we go. Steve Anderson throwing in a tenner as well. Let's get his name written down. Oh, Steve Anderson throwing in a tenner. The Super Chats are flying in. The boys are enjoying themselves now. Uh, shout out as well to the Boxing Nutters messenger chat. We had a call-in show last night around nine o'clock, just as the, as the DAZN undercard was grinding to a halt, and there was about nine or ten altogether on the panel. So, uh, some of the usual faces: Ryan Deal was in with us, Joe Kennedy. We had uh, who else was on? John O'Donovan, uh, Justin from North Carolina jumped on. So, if you want to join over at patreoncom forward boxing asylum, you can jump on the next call-in show when we run one, if you wish. And we've got Let's a live show coming up soon, mate, as well. Live show coming up, Punches from the Past coming up soon as well, featuring um, a fight that you might remember from back in the day, 2007, I think it was. Oh, Me and Andy. Oh, with... members. Yeah. Absolutely. Whoever I, I wants got, to jump on. I, I got to tell you, Steve, uh, the, the last three minutes of this show have uh, been more profitable than uh, fighting three minutes for Don <laughs> King these days. <laughs> well, Machino, Machino can actually attest to that, but he fought fucking 36 minutes, 12 rounds. So. <laughs> 50 grand. <laughs> uh, the boys are throwing it in. Shout out. Yeah, Dungino, Ricky Graville, Johnny Horscott, Nelson and Steve Anderson throwing in those super chats. Uh, throw them in if you want to as well. Is there any chance of an Asylum only fans on the agenda, says Adam Hughes? Well, you never know. There might be. If Michelle Joy oh, Phelps can do it, yeah. then any fe- any old fella can do it, I suppose, Andy. We need to see we need to see the content though, mate. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be tits and ass or just ass. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, you, might just, you guys yeah. keep shooting down my ideas of yeah, well, we've been over my ideas of OnlyFans. And uh well I we will just keep throwing it out there, but uh, I, I don't know what kind of content you would want there. Like, do you want like Andy recreating the scene from uh, Silence of the Lambs where he tucks and dances? I mean what what are you wanting to pay for I here, people? Over some father beans. <laughs> No, I'm talking about <laughs> Buffalo Bob, you know. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. <laughs> well, I would fuck me, actually. If I could. <laughs> <laughs> I'd piss up in the gritty bed, man. This is like the hangover after all the super chats coming through, I think, this this chat. Shout out to Declan Graffin, uh, a.k.a. Declan Graffin. He's throwing in 449. Evening, lads. Declan is in the Patreon as well, so we didn't have to throw that in. Here's another one in the Patreon. Who's, I'll tell you what, they're leading oh, the way, I'll these boys. Back. More money than sense. Michael McElway is throwing in 449 as well. Let me write that down. Shout out to Michael. Ah, Good friend of ours, Andy. Been to many a I show can, in Belfast. I, I can see why Mick's put in the five quid this week, mate, to be honest with you, because he saved the money on all that bunting during the, during the course of the weekend. There, so <laughs> put it towards the see knows what the scores were about. Cheers, Mick. <laughs> Mick says, I'm hosting my weekly AA meeting and some tool hasn't turned up. <laughs> you can have his weekly <laughs> <stuff>. <laughs> <laughs> More money than sense, these boys. Thanks very much. We do very much appreciate it. It's going to a good cause anyway. Uh, like having Aussie back on the call, it's great to have Aussie Woo! back with us. Just in time for a cracking finish and a cracking return over in Wales. What a cracking finish it was from Joe Cordina, Aussie. Out of all the outcomes, I did not expect anything mm-hmm. definitive <clears throat> and clinical from Cordina. Now, take Ames. He's in the chat, Oz. He was saying beforehand, Cordina's power has improved. He's appeared to be punching a lot harder. And I tell you what, I'll go out his proof of that. Absolutely. I, I think there's no better, uh, you know, proof to show that your power's improved because it was a phenomenal shot. And uh, I mean, a, a guy who got caught square uh, and he just didn't see it coming. And, and fuck me, he, he was just, it, it wasn't like a corpse on the floor, you know, like a junior far shaking, but he wasn't, he wasn't far off. He had no clue where he was. Uh, there was no chance he was ever getting up from that. I think he could have had, you know, 60 seconds and it has still been, you know, in no position to continue. So, yeah, it's it's an outcome I never expected. I thought if Cordina was ever going to get him out of there, it would have been extremely late in the fight, talking rounds 11 and 12, but certainly not in the second round in that fashion as well. Uh, and ultimately, you know... 
you know, announcing yourself on the world stage, really, because let's have it right, Cordine has not boxed anybody at world level prior to that. And he's gone in and has just absolutely obliterated him. Um, th there's nothing much really else to say, to be honest, because, you know, it was only two fights, uh, you know, sorry, two rounds in, not even that, you know, like a round and a bit in. And th there wasn't really much to see, you know. I, I don't think you can look into a fight that much. But, yeah, a fantastic, fantastic shot. Um, a certain shock is in an extremely difficult division. That's for sure. You know, he's got Stevenson um, is one of them. Valdez, another. But, you know, what, why can't he, you know, potentially look up there? I think they'll probably do the Zelfa Barrett fight next. Mm. I think there's a reason, you know, he was chief support in Wales on Cordina's undercard. That's an easy fight to make. Um, I think there's levels in the game and I think Cordine is better than Barrett. Simple as that. Um, I'll never forget the way that Ronnie Clark pinged Zelfa Barrett. And Barrett, you know, showed balls in that fight, but was ultimately, you know, probably just a bit worked out a bit. Um, but he did, he does take shots, Barrett. But I thought last night as well, I know drifting onto the undercard, but it was probably Barrett's best performance, really, in terms of a complete performance that he well and truly outclassed uh, the, the Belgian bloke. Um, and yeah, it, it was one of those, really, you know, Barrett, a deserved European champion. It makes complete sense. This isn't a fight that needs building up now. You know, we need to leave it 12 months to, to marinate, as Hearn likes to say. Um, they should do that pretty much straight away, as good as, you know. Decent crowd in there last night, loads of support for Cordina. Um, does own do need people as headliners? Um, so why not build Cordina in Wales, you know? If, if people will see that and will want to watch him now, you know, will want to watch him. Who wouldn't want to watch somebody who ices a champion like that inside two rounds? So, yeah, a fantastic performance. And I think you've got to give credit to Tony Sims, who, you know, doesn't stand in front of the camera all the time and give regular interviews. But I was always, I was always a bit dubious of him as a trainer. But you've got to admit and you've got to look at his record recently. He does improve his fighters. He's improved John Ryder since he's gone to 168. The job he's done with Conor Ben, yes, for me, there's questions to answer. But if you said to me, what was it, two or three years ago, that Ben would be at the level he's at, I thought it'd take him 20 fights to get to area level, never mind, you know, operating around the British title level and above um, for the fights he's had. And likewise, Joe Cordina. Yes, Cordina was a top amateur, but how many top amateurs do we see turn over and actually underachieve or don't don't have the same success as they had in, in the amateur ranks as they did, well, they will in the pro ranks. It's not, you know, unheard of that. So I've got to give credit to Tony Sims as well. They said they worked on that shot. So if so, perfect. You know, nothing better as a trainer to see that you've worked on stuff and it succeeds and ends the fight in that fashion. And yeah, what's next for Joe Cordina? Probably Zelfa Barrett. Barrett. And then after that, you, you would suspect he's going to come through that Barrett um, Barrett fight, in all honesty. You, you've just got to be looking, you know, at, at the bigger fights then, without a doubt. You know, th there's no point in, in stagnating, just making, you know, standard defences. Um, another fight I'd like to see potentially down the line, um, a fight with Anthony Kakachi. I like Kakachi. Um, I think he's massively underrated. Probably wouldn't happen in a sense. Because I think he might still be with Queensbury, but okay, again, we'll get... was. Okay, an opponent for him. He just signed with Eddie as well after his last fight and brought Jarvis for Australia. Oh yes, yeah. Well, I think he's gonna fo he's gonna bot Hearns announcing an Australian rematch. card, isn't he? Oh, was oh, it? Because didn't, he, it wasn't he the one who, who threw a load of punches and burnt yeah, out on one of those shows? He, he yeah. got badly hurt against. Uh, it was on the Mickey Garcia against yeah. Sandor Martin. It was an open uh, air fight, that, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, mate. It was uh, actually a very exciting fight. He got he got. I tell you mm -hmm. what, he was on the verge of getting stopped. That so the Eddie was like in the ring afterwards, saying, "Oh, we need to get you back. We need to get you back." Showed Desperate some balls that night. I did that, Jarvis. Absolutely. So says he's ranking about the top ten at least. Brings up well, good condition. Yeah, as well, it, so. it, it's going to be interesting to see who they put him in with. I wouldn't be shocked if they can't make that Barrett fight for whatever reason. If they look at someone like, uh, you know, a Francisco Fonseca, you know, something like that, who Ryan Garcia banged in around, but he's had a run of wins recently conveniently ranked by the WBA as well. 
Um, but there's no reason why that Barrett fight can't happen. There is absolutely no reason whatsoever. There's also, um, I think, Kid Galahad as well. He's probably up at that weight as well. But in reality, he wants to see Kid Galahad box again. Oh, not sorry. Really One reason that. might be, uh, Ames mentioned this last night, and MB has reminded me of it in the chat, about Rakimov being the mandatory. Do you remember him who beat Fazile? Yeah, oh, Josh, right, Josh yes. As well, eh? he, he fought Jojo Diaz mm -hmm. as well, did he not make it a draw? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Tough guy. Oh, so what, tough fight, when man. is that due? When is that mandatory due? It can't, it must be. I, I don't know when it was, actually. They I mean, might try, I don't know knows? whether they'll sneak Barrett in or not, but it might be Rakimov next. It might be. Potential, yeah, potentially. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. I mean, what, what it wouldn't surprise me is if they try and potentially um, get a fight in with Barrett and then maybe look at unifying. Uh, who knows? But yeah, but but back back to the fight last night. Um, the card needed it because I thought you know the card overall was was garbage. To be honest, the, there's no other word to summarise it. Um, it it was trash. It was poor. Just completely unacceptable. You know for, for you know for that. I mean, yes, Agawa would have cost money to come over, but for me, area level fights and English title fights type of stuff they're not expensive to put on and some of the trash that was on that undercard could have easily been replaced with, you know, giving opportunities to, you know, some people who, who were on the undercard, just match them better and get like Celtic titles on the line. Um, it would have produced, you know, far more entertaining night. But when you get a knockout like that, what does everybody talk about? It's the Cordina punch and the rest of the card has ultimately been forgotten about. Talking about knockouts, Matty, Des says, what was the better shot, Fury against White or Cordina against Ogawa last night? God, that's a good question there, Steve. You know, I, I have to say, just based on, on how screwed up they really were after the shot, I'm going to have to go with uh, the shot on Ogawa. Yeah, pure, <laughs> pure punch, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was, I mean, and let's be fair also on that one. I mean, Cordina sparked him good, but... He sold I mean, that top play, though. He sold that he top sold, he, lo he looked down, but Ogawa had his hand his so fence. far down. His, his chin was stuck out there. It was it was such a beautiful shot, but Ogawa was just fucking asking for that punch. My God. I mean, that was just that that angle was perfect and clean, and, and Cordina took advantage of it and, and just fucking separated Ogawa from his senses. It, it, was, it was a great shot, but... My God, Agawa has horrible defense. That was, his position of his glove was just awful. Just awful. Uh, he fell for the jab to the body, and he never saw the right hand coming upstairs. Yeah. As flush of a finish as you'll see all year. And as the boys were talking about, actually, just going off a slight tangent, they're talking about Shakur Stevenson. Probably be a defense against Zelfa Barrett. Rakamov's being mentioned, but we'll not worry too much about what he does next because that was a shot out of the blue. Yeah, well, listen, mate. This this is the thing as well. Is, is you know, some people will always remember. Uh, I'll use a football analogy here, but does anybody remember Greece winning the two thousand and four European Championship? Absolutely, do yeah. The Greeks yeah. too. Yeah, the Greeks do. But see, at the end of the day, it was shit to watch. Shit to watch. And what I'm saying is this: you will get fighters who, or 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 or, or, or teams who go into you know big games, want to win big trophies, whatever it is, and they shit the bed, but still manage to win. You know, win the title, so to speak. That will always be remembered there last night for his first world title fight. It's not so much you winning the fight, it's the manner what you do it. And that was just, you know, because in the day, you know, it looked like to me Ogawa was, you know, he didn't seem phased. First round was like, okay, this is this is looking, you know, a pretty neat fight. You know, Cordina didn't look phased. Ogawa seemed to be kind of, you know, looking, just looking as well. And then it says he bit on the feint, that jab to the body, right hand over the top, bang on the chin, as Jim Walt would say. And as Tony Bell, you said on the, on, on the, on the commentary, nobody nobody picked Cardina to win in that fashion, even by knockout. I think everybody picked Cardina to win on points last week, to be honest with you, now that I think about it. But there were a couple of prediction leagues that I'm in online, and I was looking at the percentages and that, not one person that even in, in those prediction leagues even picked Cardina to win by knockout. So, again, you, you, it's just, you can't oversell it too much because obviously it was two rounds, but it was just a manner, you know, how, how it was done. No one, no everybody can become a world champion. No everybody can, you know, look good becoming a world champion some people can you know get a dodgy decision to become a world champion but to do it in that fashion for your first world title everybody will remember it by the way everybody will be talking about that knockout for 10 20 years to come guaranteed that's absolutely tremendous first, 
best first title knockout win I think I've seen since Adonis Stevenson sparked Chad Dawson. For... Yeah, it's a fair shout, actually. Mm-hmm. Considering how, uh, or Martinez sparking at Williams, becoming world champion as well. He was already a world champion before that, was Yeah, but yeah. He, yeah, it was 154. Yeah, because he, be, yeah, no, no, he, beat, he beat Pavlik before he knocked out Williams. That's right. That's right. Yep. Um, yeah, so yeah, as, as, as for uh, next movements, I was trying to search for Rakimov actually because I'm trying to figure out what his situation is because Ozzy was asking. I see that the mantra was due in March, I believe. Uh-huh. But obviously, I, I wonder if it's because maybe Rakimov is maybe based in Russia that he can't travel, possibly. I'm not too sure. Um, as for future, you know, it makes sense to make the Barrett fight, to be honest, because obviously Barrett's highly ranked with IBF as well. It makes complete sense, uh, especially in terms of editing that, but I agree with what Ozzy was saying as well. That that knockout saved that show there last night because it took away all the shit parts of the the, the undercard to be honest with you. So you get to get a knockout like that, to have everybody kind of like clamming up and oh that was fantastic, great. It was it was absolutely fantastic to see. But then you start looking through all those rankings and that you know it's not really kind of great pickings or great shakes you got to pick up for. You. This is the reason why I was maybe picking like some maybe Brock Jarvis, who's kind of like more in his kind of physical prime at this point. Uh, you got the guy for Italy, is Michael Magnesia, his name is. I think he's an Italian champion at this point. Isn't he great? I think uh, Cordina would smash him out as well, based off last night's performance. Um, Fuseli, the South African, he's got chinned by Rakimov. Uh, he's a bit chinny, to be honest with you. So, really, hopefully, um, well, maybe Oshak Foster, actually. He's calling out. Who's he been calling out, actually? Yeah, Oshak e. Foster, yeah. I can't remember who called Gervonti. it. But- Gervonti, it was Might it? have been. He looked decent on the pub element has, card, Foster. He's all right. Him. He has. He's a decent fighter. He's got a couple of L's in his record, though. That's the thing. I'm surprised as to how old he is. But he's a, he was a decent amateur. He uh, came up the, through the ranks with Gervonti, I believe, as well. Uh, you got Kakachi. I think I heard his name get mentioned. Mm. Um, and Liam Wilson. Um, I think he's Australian, uh, ex Olympian. I think he might have had a kind of shock defeat a couple of fights back, possibly. I need to go back and check that one. But um, no, look, Cardina was absolutely fantastic here last night. As I say, is, you know, just to kind of, it was it was the speed to sell that fake jab and the right hand to come straight after it. It was it was just beautiful, absolutely perfect, man. You can't you, you can't buy moments like that. That's a career highlight knockout. He will always you know cherish. Doesn't matter what he does now. At this point, his first world title came out in a knockout like that. Absolutely tremendous, mate. Almost as good as Tommy against the gas station attendant. <laughs> Uh, no ears were bitten that night, though. <laughs> no ears were bitten in the making of old Tommy. Um, moving on to next week's action, Matty. One fight I was going to ask you about, actually, before I completely forget about it. Edgar Belanga. Uh, if, if you're in charge of Belanga, Matty, what on earth would you do with this guy? Because he's a bit of a strange one. They built up this knockout streak. It clearly isn't that good. He got knocked down by Caceres. He struggled at times against Steve Rolls. He doesn't live the life outside of the ring. They reckon he's a bit of a party animal. He's going in again. This is Roma Alexis Angulo. He's not the greatest, but he can punch. He went a few rounds with Benavides. I think he went the distance with Gilberto Ramirez, so he's relatively durable. Do you think this could be a bit of a shootout? Could he give Belanga a bit of trouble, do you think, Matty? You know, I think he quite possibly uh, could give him a hard time. Uh, just because the fact that he's durable and, and Berlanga is shooting for the knockout so much that it makes him very susceptible. Um, I think this is on the, the uh, Puerto Rican Day Parade. Uh, and uh, this right now is the best that Bob can offer to the to the Puerto Rican people. Um, you know, unlike the the incredible cards that they used to offer uh, with uh, Cotto and before that uh, with uh, Hector Camacho. Um, it, it's uh, quite a step down, um, and I think it's a little bit of a disappointment for the Puerto Rican people. Xander Zayas was supposed to be off the card. He is now not on the card, injury or COVID, I can't recall. Um, so Berlanga really needs to shine here. Um, but I actually think that added pressure could uh, could definitely um, make him uh, even more vulnerable than usual. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm not saying that he uh, I'm not saying that he loses, but um, he he's definitely not a, a top tier fighter. And and this is just that kind of guy that could could uh, upset the apple cart um, because. It, but I mean, don't kid yourself. If if uh, Berlanga is able to get him out of there. Pfft, that's actually a pretty fair statement. So um, we'll wait it both ways. Yeah, that should be a good one. Frank has plenty of fighters. He's a strong fighter, that guy is, you know. That, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he could give yeah. him a, a bit of a few. But the thing is, he's going to be straight ahead, Andy, against Belanga, yeah. whereas I think the movers give him a bit of trouble. But 
he, he's in danger of being a bit of a gimmick, isn't he? They're going to have to cash him out soon against somebody decent. Otherwise, I think he's he's going to get upset, possibly, Belanga. I thought I thought, I thought thought he was awful against Rolls. I, I kind of showed him up for what he is at this One-dimensional. point. One-dimensional. Exactly, mate, exactly. And, and Golo, for what I can recall, is, is, is come ahead... Yep. Strong guy. I mean, day, mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And if he could, if he could take Berlinga's power and he's still standing there showing shots, he, and Berlinga might just run out of fucking answers at the end of the day. You just never know. Well, this dude's, Col- well. this dude's Colombian. He could be on the toot. Might have a really good motor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fire yeah, looking, war, baby. <laughs> looking forward to that one. Yeah, Frank has a few fighters in action next weekend. Oz, we'll go on to Dubois, Brian, later on. But first of all, Telford is becoming a bit of a hotbed of boxing. Uh, Richie Woodall back in the day, Grace the Ice Rink. I think that was where he won his world title, fought Marcus Bayer in Telford. But next weekend, we've got a few guys on the undercard who could be uh, ones to look out for. George Bance is there, Muhammad Ali. Uh, no pressure on him with a name like that. Willie Hutchinson going in against a bit of a, a jobber. Ethan James. Ijaz Ahmed in the chief support against Quaze Kadami for the vacant British Super Flyweight title. Oz. They fought twice before, guaranteed to be a decent fight. And also, pr- quick, pretty quick turnaround for Mark Leach. I... You were the main man when he fought Chris Bork. You thought he would do the business. I thought Bork would win, would win rather. Leach gave him the runaround. He's going in now in his first defence against undefeated, untested Donington's Liam Davis, who's going to be well supported, but he's going to be right up against it trying to wrestle the British title off Leach, who's a bit of a classy operator, if not a big puncher. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's a shame that th- there were three good fights on this card. Ethan James should have been fighting Connor Parker. Um, it looks like that fight's fallen through, which is a real shame because that was another, it's a big step up for for James. And, you know, I think we saw Parker against Sam Maxwell. And yeah, he's he, from he Wolverhampton, was, I think. Is, is he the one from Wolverhampton? He is, kind of Parker, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he was well beaten by Maxwell, but given the calibre of opponent James has been in with, it would have been a massive step up. Uh, but the, the rest of the card is pretty garbage, to be honest. You know, it's, you know, it's prospects and, you know, Hutchinson making a comeback against, you know, pretty low-level operators. But it will be in- it's Hutchinson's first fight since he got chinned off Lennox Clark. So, going to be interesting to see how he uh, boxes, you know, because if they're being chinned, it can take something out of a lot of opponents. Uh, but on the on the main event, great fight. Mark Leach against Liam Davis. Um, I-, I have Leach as a favourite. I-, I think you'd be stupid not to, really given the, the level Leach has operated at and the wins he's got and the opponents he's been in with. And again, I, I just, I, I've, I've got to admit, I think Leach is probably the best super bantamweight um, pro- domestically, bar maybe Cunningham. But I think he'd give Cunningham a good fight as well. Um, so I, I think Leach will just, I think he'll outbox Davis. And I think it'll go a similar way perhaps to the Bork fight as well from where he'll just get a lead and pretty much coast the way through. But it's good to see people active, you know. How many times do we see fighters get a win and then they go missing for God knows how long? But Leach boxed in March and he's back out in June. You know, if he, if he gets another comprehensive win, there's no reason why he can't box potentially another two times this year. Um, but it's good, you know, th- these are the fights you want to see for British titles. Um, for Davis, it's a big step up. He, he's operated, you know... He's won an English title and he's had, you know, he's got one of these ranking belts. He beat that Dixon Flores, um, you know, I think. Did we first see, you know, he's been beating off Maloney. I think one of the Yafis beat him as well. Quadras. But yeah, he beat him handedly. So big step up for Davis. And I think he'll give a solid account of himself, but just don't think he'll be good enough um, on Saturday night. And, and Ahmed Kadami sells itself, really. Um, they've had... Uh, Ahmed B got, I think, a fortunate um, majority decision first time round, and then we drew the second time round in what was a fantastic fight. So the third can't really fail, can it? Uh, again, British title on the line, um, another good fight, and looking forward to that. So yeah, top two fights are decent. Um, probably a bit similar to the Wales card actually on, um, you know, on Saturday just gone. You know, two solid fights or two good fights, and the rest of the card is pretty pretty poor, really. Um, so, yeah, o- overall, top two good, rest of the card, not interested. Andy, later on, on Saturday evening, 
happening over in California. Jaime Munguia looking to go 40-0 against Jimmy Kilroy and Kelly. He seems to be going the Ramirez route with this long record. He always seems like a young prospect to me, Munguia. I would give him the benefit of the doubt. They're going to put him in against Triple G. That was three or four years ago now. He's 25 years of age. They're talking about him fighting Charlo, talking about him fighting these other guys. I can see why they're putting him in against Jimmy Kelly, because Kelly's coming off the win over Kanat Islam. So they're kind of ticking him along, but... Golden Boy are going to have to do something with Jaime Mungia. I'm getting frustrated with this level of opposition now. 25 years of age, former world champion, moved up, he can punch. He's exciting. He's not the worst fighter in the world. Get past Kelly and let's start making these fights. Let's start pushing the Charlos over the line or fighters of that calibre because I'm starting to get a bit frustrated with his career yeah. now, Mungia. You just wonder as well what Golden Boy have actually got planned for the future prospects, just regardless of Mungia. I mean, some of the fighters have got in that. I think Golden Boy are actually even washed as an operation. Um, well, then the day, Jimmy Kelly's coming off that shock upset win against Kana Islam. Was it was a majority or a split decision? I think it was. He's highly ranked with WBO. We just don't know what's happening in Draddy at this point with this 160 belt. You'd have thought if he was moving up to 160 to fight Zach Parker, that belt would have been forced to be vacated. Maybe the Mungia fight against Kelly might be for a vacant belt, but it's no. The winner of this prob- probably gets mandated to fight Andrade, or he gets forced basically Andrade to make a decision. Where it maybe then brings in maybe Mungia to possibly fight maybe a Chris Eubank. Um, Danny Dignam's no going to be obviously in the equation, so I would like to. I would love to see Mungia against um, Alb Canuli. but again. It could come down. Is Alb Cooling, is he, is he top rank or is that PBC? I yeah, that. but he, he's middleweight, isn't he? I think, isn't Mungia skipped all the way up to... Is he up to super middle or is he, is he just... No, oh, but he's at 160. Eh, Eddie, Eddie, mm-hmm. it's Ali Mahanala, sir. <laughs> so is that a silent K, I take it, mate? Or <laughs> like a silent Q? It's, it's <laughs> sure something, buddy. It's well, something. anyway, I'll call him Yanni Beck just for the, just for the fucking... Just for the, uh, the bands. But as I say, there's um, you know, Vinny Feige, but she's apparently wanting too much money to uh, fight. Who was he used to fight again, Oz? Hamza Shiraz wanted him for 25 grand. No, yeah, wanted him for 25 grand. Yeah. That's, that's not even European title level money. That's fucking that's world title level money you're talking about here now at this point. Feige, Boots, Jimmy Kelly, Felix Cash, Fal Cal for Brazil, Carlos Adams. It's not exactly bitching me fucking talent for Mungia to be honest with you. And I agree with you, mate. Mungia has been runs by his management as 154 champion at that time. He is an okay fighter. He's got his limitations, obviously. And I get it. The moment's going to come at some point, he's going to get stepped up. He was going to take the Golovkin fight, as you mentioned. The sanction bodies you know, you know, knocked it back. He won't fight Charlo for obvious reasons. Um, so where does that leave him? WBO route, so again, I think we'll just need to wait and see how it plays out. He beats Jimmy Kelly, I'd like to see either the Yannabek fight or maybe Chris Eubank, but what the fuck's Eubank doing these days, man? Eubank's been at it now for three, four years, just, you know, plodding along, picking off opponents, but... That's actually a decent fight on paper, though. Yeah, on paper at least. How it plays out another, you know, is another matter, but... Uh, I can't think of anything else, mate, at this point, to, you know, to add to it, you know, especially in terms of names. You know, if, if you mention Shiraz, you can maybe put him in the mix as well. You know, if he's wanting to fight in Plaguing Boots, then he'd be wanting to fight in in my opinion, which, to be honest, there's no much difference between the two guys, to be honest. Uh, Michael Thompson, Matty says, Mungia is a fun fighter, needs a step up, though. I think that's quite succinct. It wraps it up for me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he he's uh, got got what it takes to be a a real fan favorite kind of fighter. Uh, but uh, you got to match him right, and uh, and uh, I, I think he's developing, working with Eric Morales, and I think he's uh, he's looked better recently uh, since then. But uh, yeah, he he needs a good dance partner, you know. And if he can't find someone to fight for a title, I don't know what's going on since uh, he lost to Arius and has been on the downhill turn. But I, in my head, um, I always thought that Mungia against Jarrett Hurd is a really fan friendly fight. And you know, if he's going to fight trash and and the fuck PBC is done with Hurd, fuck man. it. Be all right. Yeah, I I I'll, I one sixty at one sixty. Would he yeah. make 160 these days, Hurd? I mean, he, he was struggling to make 154. He's yeah. massive. Look at the size compared to Pavlik, he's, man. He's about the same size as Mungia, I think. He's a bonafide light heavyweight. Or that's what he should be fighting if he were fighting old school days. He'd be fighting light, light heavy. Maybe. Yeah, same well, maybe way about it, mate. No, maybe about it, he, he would be. 
Yeah, because there wouldn't be any 68 at the time. There's 254 there. at the time either. Yeah, you might be right, man. I'll, uh, I, I might, I'll concede that to you about 70% I, with reservation. Fuck it, 100%, mate. You know it's right. I'm not so sure, man. Never trust a Scotsman. They trust an Italian either, mate. Well, well, especially one that's also part Sicilian. You're getting into trouble. Have you not seen The Princess Bride? No. What the fuck is wrong with you? It's a perfect Me. movie. What are you doing I, watching I, The Princess Bride, Matty? Exactly. It's a perfect got, movie. I've no good time to watch movies, man. It's got Andre the Giant and sword fighting. Oh, like, oh that one. Around. Yeah, yeah, that is a good movie, actually. Jesus Christ. Christ. One, yeah. oh, anyways, fucking bastard. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, Mungia to win by stoppage, Matty? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, let's keep things moving. No rapping while Kelly this weekend. It's the first weekend of his uh, community service, so we wish him well with that. Uh, let's get over the best, to... Mate. Remember, All the best, Rob. The showers, yeah. but you're, but you're to the wall, mate. F- free Rob Kelly. Uh, where are we going to? The Casino Miami J LA over in Miami, no less. Donking Promotions. Tell you what, come on now. We've got, it, would, it would be remiss of me not to play this video to celebrate this fight. Saturday, June 11th, live on Pay-Per-View. Don King Productions presents The Fight for Freedom and Peace. Undefeated Trevor the Dream Brian takes on Daniel Dynamite Dubois for the WBA Heavyweight Championship. Plus title fights featuring undefeated heavyweight Dakari Scott taking on Jonathan Guidry. Cruiserweight champion Johnny Langston plus NABA welterweight champ Treshawn Wiggins as he defends his belt against Travis Castellon. Plus light heavyweight sensation Ahmed El Bialy. Contact your cable or satellite provider today. The fight for freedom is live. <laughs> Ahmed Albi Ali, man. Holy he got knocked out by John Pascal, didn't he? He did. In six rounds, Pascal was like 40 fights <laughs> into his career by that point. <laughs> he was peak juice, though, Andy. Uh, well, I suppose, mate. I suppose. But have you seen his fucking... He's only... I don't think he's been, been scheduled for a 12 round of that guy. He's fucking made that on his Commodore fucking Spectrum or something like that, you know? I'll tell Spectrum. you what. I tell you, Andy, what a good fight on this card. You've got DeCarre Scott, Mack Truck. He's 23. He came in at a slim line, 276 pounds on the shit. undercard of what was the last show we saw? That was Trevor Bryan, wasn't it? Against um, whoever he fought next, anyway. Oh, Jonathan Guidry, who he, Scott is actually fighting Guidry, Andy. He's the <laughs> shrimp farmer from Louisiana. Oh, is he? Yeah. Yeah, Guidry is the, the, the shrimp farmer. Yeah, he's fighting against oh, 280 pounds of Carre Scott. I've just seen a picture on the right, so he's the fair Louisiana. He's got this fucking massive, like, say, how can I put this? The Amish beard. That's what he's got, the Amish Ford beard. Oh, Trevor Bryan to a split in his last fight, Andy. He could have been world heavyweight champ, but he could have been one who's fighting fucking <laughs> Daniel Dubois, man. Poor bastard. Why does it all matter when you look at it that way, right? My, is this paper free in up, America, mate? If you find I don't have a clue. Show. I'm not. Well, I, unless it comes with like my Trilla Fight Pass that I pay two ninety nine a month for, or BT something like that. For us, I BT. ain't paying for this shit. King Vision, I, I, man, it's back on the old. Remember King Vision? Fuck me, man. <laughs> These are the kind of cards that'll turn you into a goddamn nihilist. Like, what's the fucking point? Mate, this, all of a sudden, I want to write the next great Russian novel. Hearing this, this is the stuff that can really test how hardcore that you are. By the way, I mean anybody who's going to start up and watch this whole card has got something wrong with them. These are whole, basically. I'm going to be struggling to watch this fucking main event. See if this main event goes a distance. I ain't going to watch it. I'm watching the highlights and that'll be it. No, no chance. Like, Absolutely you know on, no lads. chance. This goes Tricky Trev, the man. Oh, I've got a feeling about Tricky Trev, you know. Oh, I think he might pull himself against the ball. I tell you what, if, no Bryce, if Brian stays on his feet, mate, do not fucking rule out the black arts of Don King. He's made a <laughs> fucking decades of them, man. Didn't you worry about that? Don King. No way. Evil never dies, mate. I keep saying it. You just, like, there is just... no way this goes the distance whatsoever. Dubois is going to obliterate him in a couple of rounds. He's just going to eat that right hand and he's going to go down like a sack of spuds. He is... I mean, that video, that preview video is a fucking joke. I mean, I, I worry for Dubois whether he's actually going to get paid or not. N- never mind, you know, anything else. Because, I mean, who the fuck is buying this? I mean, how much is this costing on pay-per-view? You know, it's on BT Sport over, um, over here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's a co-promotion <laughs> between Don <laughs> King and Frank Warren. Of course, everyone's yeah. going to get paid. That's right. No, no, no. Warren is not involved in this. 
it's solely a donking uh, promoter, and the matchmaker is also donking as well. I mean, the, the undercard, it, it's just, it is putrid, this. It's absolutely dire. Um, but no, I, I don't get Trevor Bryan's garbage. He's absolutely shite. And, you know, I mean, he, he, his record's a bit of a fad, but I mean, you know, Big Bermains to Burn is a, you know, big fat lump now when he was going 11, 12 rounds with him. And then that Jonathan Guidry, I mean, who the fuck is Jonathan Guidry? You know, where did he even appear from? Where did he even appear for? Appear from? And he's gone the distance, a, a split decision as well. And then, I mean, you look at him, he's, he's banged out fucking BJ Flores. And then the rest of it, so Gallum BJ's Brown, dog. Derek, Derek Rossi, um, Stacy, I mean, Stacy Frazier, who even is that? <laughs> Terrell Woods. I mean, who are these people? I mean, do they even exist? I mean, he's fought Sandy Soto 2 and 13 and 2 and 10 at the time, twice. Br- Brian is just a cartoon character. He's a better Christopher Lovejoy. And guess who promoted Christopher Lovejoy? Don King. Ooh. I don't know where he picks these people up, but ultimately he's got, he's got it. <laughs> This uh, WBA, you know, regular title, but uh, Dubois is going to obliterate him, and it's not going to be pretty either. He's going to absolutely kill him. The, the it's going to be a one-sided on, match. Can I say, keep an eye on the belt situation here because we were told that these belts were getting phased out. So mm. Trevor Bryan has been holding this belt hostage, Steve. I don't know how long now at this point, but mm. if Dubois wins this title, this is the part that makes him mandatory challenger for Uzik or. You know, whoever holds the belt uh, after yeah. the Joshua fight. Um, so hopefully we see these fucking fights or these titleists getting fucking phased out because we were told long ago. I mean, yeah, who was the other one? There was, there was uh, David Morel last night. Sorry, he was he was another, mm-hmm. another one of those fake belt holders. Shite Lara yeah. last week, another one, Chris another Colbert's fake belt got holder. His off him. Mm-hmm. Yep, Stanny Onis has got another one. He's another belt holder, mm-hmm. good fighter, but fake title, mate. You know, Javante Davis mm-hmm. still holds a belt at one thirty-five. Uh, Olymp- I'm led to believe. Andy, yeah, I'm not even trolling, right? Honestly, s- say though, say if Brian hangs around, Dubois doesn't get rid of him early, the fight drags on a bit. Tricky Trev might hang in there, you know. Mate, I'm telling you right now, if, if this is anywhere sort of close, and I get it with Aussie, you know, I'm, I'm having a laugh, but I expect Dubois to knock him out. But if he doesn't, he, and he's like missing shots and getting tied up and being ugly, and it's like awful to score. I would not be surprised one iota to see Brian get a fucking job decision here, mate, to be honest with you. But no, nah, I'm going to say Dubois knocks him out probably within six rounds. If, if, if Dubois doesn't wipe this guy out, this is detrimental to his career, in my opinion. You still with Shimmer Gugan, isn't he? Yeah, mm, yeah. Yeah, aye, aye. yeah and, and that's what I mean as well. I think we all agree, and we've said it before in this podcast, McGuigan is without a doubt one of the best trainers in the world, and he improves fighters as well. McGuigan also has a big say in who his fighters fight and are matched with. McGuigan is not thick and, you know, everybody else isn't. You know, regardless of what people think of Warren, he's pretty switched on when it comes to matching people and his fighters at the right time. We all looked at the Anthony Yard Kovalev fight and thought he's going to be, you know, it's just going to be a two-round obliteration for Kovalev. You know, 30 more seconds, Yard would have been the world heavyweight champion and we'd have all ended up with egg on our face at that point. But no, th- this is a complete, you know, different scenario. And yeah, but Brian, he's, he's just manufactured his way to the top. And Dubois, you know, I, I know he got beat off Joe Joyce, but he's young. He's got, you know, he's got the fundamentals. He's got an excellent job. He hits hard. I just don't see what Brian can do. He can fucking try running around that ring, but he's a fat bastard, so he's going to gas by running if it's not going to be by taking body shots. So, yeah, Dubois is going to obliterate him, and if he doesn't knock him out, as I say, it's detrimental to his career, and it will do more harm than good, to be honest. This card Matty, is a literal metric ton of trash. Yeah, I was going to say, Matty, um, Brian has a vibe of another donking heavyweight, one of our favourites, big Christopher Lovejoy, but he's definitely confident. He fancies it. I saw him doing a video. Looked like it. I don't know where he was, yeah. to be honest, but he was doing a speedball. Not very fast, mind you. But... Lovejoy was calling it Lucas Brown last night, by the way. Yeah, I Did saw that. that? I got me. that for Bellevue of the Week somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but there. Yeah. Love Love Joy though. I mean, but he's another one. How much did he get paid to fight? Uh, what's grand. it called again? Eighty grand, was it no? 
Charles. I mean, look, look, yeah, Manuel Char, look at Christopher Lovejoy's record and literally being a fucking motor mouth who was 20 and on 20 KOs, boxing people who we don't even know exist in Tijuana, and he got paid eight. Oh, no, it was more than that. I thought it was three, six figures he got to fight Char. And he got banged out in two rounds and then claimed he had an injury. But that's what I mean, fucking self-managed now, you know. Dave Allen ducked him. Lovejoy flew over here and then Allen ducked him. You know, they claimed there was a contractual issue when, you know, no one wants to fight pretty boy Lovejoy. But no, it's uh, he's another one. Fuck knows how. But got paid six figures to fight Man <laughs> Um, Manuel Char and yeah and Shock a link to Don King is they're a disgrace these sort of fighters they have no place in the business whatsoever I'm I'm hoping we just see you know like uh, I mean a serious KO on Friday on Saturday for Dubois that you know like a a Fat and Cordy a Fat and Ogawa one combined and you just see Brian just absolutely corpsed on in the ring. Yeah, that that will do it for me, and that will show the levels between these two, uh, between the two fighters. Well, and it's just it's just a trash fight, Steve, and it's a trash card. And the fact that Dubois is probably going to just wipe wipe the floor with Brian is ridiculous when it's involved for a title. When you consider that Joy, Joe Joyce basically disfigured, disfigured the guy a couple of fights ago as well. Um, there's all sorts of levels to look at this. It's uh, absolutely ridiculous. And, uh, you know, with his, uh, with his promotional music and all that, I feel like, uh, you know, they're probably going to have men at work performing along with two of the Quad City DJs, which I guess would make them the Bi City DJs. Matty, you're upsetting me, man. I thought you were going to be on board with this Trevor Bryan train. No, no, I'm not. I'm not on that train. I, I think that train goes straight to uh, to Dairy Queen. Well, yeah, tell you what, Don King will be on it anyway. Here, Matty, while we're in the land of the crazy, Holt sent in a message. He said, "What does the asylum make of my pound for pound list?" Spent a few hours on it, hopefully, so it will get the pod's approval. Although I know it's all subjective, so it's just for fun, really. The list is as follows: Number ten, Josh Taylor. Number nine, Earl Spence. Number eight, Inoue. Number seven, Canelo. Number six, Crawford. Five, Usyk. Four, Nathan Cleverly, CTE. Three, the Flagstone, the Ice Crawler. Two, Kel Brooks, Bum Buddies, Machete. And number one, Ray Pops, Hard Drive. That's It's a disgraceful list, Matty, to be honest. Not even funny, man. Imagine having Spence three places behind Crawford. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I imagine that uh, this, this is a nice little joke uh, here. I, uh, I give him credit. A couple of those are clever. I think he's reaching on a few things there, but uh, a fair submission nonetheless. Twice Uzik well, on that list. <laughs> Ray Pop, Andy, though, man. That's a name from the past, isn't it? Fuck me, man. I Ray Pops. Two weeks in a row. Didn't hate a day of bringing him up last week. I can't mind it. I tell you what, I, he must be the only one that's had me blocked on Twitter for like the very, very start. Uh -huh. To be honest with you, me too. Ab absolute danger. You know, check that hard drive, as the guy says there. Like, fucking well, hell. Nathan well, Cleverly, CTE, without doubt. Well, was he the dude that t hosted Top of the Pops? No, oh, that's Jimmy Savile, you're thinking about. That's Jimmy Seville. <laughs> Seville. Savile. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Pop, man. I tell you what, he's been brought up like a ghost. He might turn up on Michelle Phelps. What was podcast, that woman's name? He used to used to kind of like fucking mirror on Twitter, man. What's her name? Be wasn't it Becky? What's her fucking name? Some young lassie, anyway. What a weirdo. Looking lovely here. Oh, uh, uh, Bella. 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 Something. That's her name. Bella. I can't remember her name. Oh, she must be about man. 17 by now, that one. Yeah, exactly. Ah, exactly. <laughs> aye, what a pedophile he was. This, this should be going on like 10 years, by the way. Fucking hell. <laughs> Shout out to Ray Pop. Hope you're doing well, Ray. Let's get back to the boxing action uh, with you, Ozzy. Where should we go next? We've got Inua, but we'll just park that for a second. We don't want to blow our load too soon. Uh, no disrespect to Ray Pop there. Let's go on to Richard Riakpour Saturday evening. Carl Graves is the matchmaker for Ben Shalom Boxing on Boxer, Wembley Arena. Uh, Jermaine Brown, he's on the undercard against Zach Chelly, apparently, if it's still on. Chris Congo going in against Sebastian Formella. Joe Pigford, Lauren Price, and Vidal Riley. React poor against Fabio Turchi. We've seen Turchi fight before against uh, Tommy McCarthy, got knocked out. React poor is maturing Aussie into a nice boxer. Good jab, physically strong. He can punch. He's a little bit raw. But I actually like him. I look forward to his fights, React poor. And I'm looking forward to this mm -hmm. on Saturday night. Yeah, I, I mean, I've got, I've got to say, I don't think this is a particularly good fight. Um, more so because I think React poor is a level above. Mm -hmm. um, Turchi and it Turchi didn't get knocked out by McCarthy. He, he got beat on a split 
But right. McCarthy okay. won well. But it was one of them where it was out in Italy, you know, one of these matchroom Italy shows. And mm-hmm. and yeah, I, I think I think but I do think React Paul will knock Turchi out. Um, you know, it's been big up, you know, it's a massive step up, but it's not really at all. I mean, React Paul will 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 batter this guy. He's decent, you know. I thought I, I like the way they're keeping him active. You know, he had that run out against that um you know, what was it, back end of last year against that Polish guy, that Twardowski, and then got out again against Duradola and then got out again. And then um, only three months ago and knocked out Dion Juma, uh, which was a good win. And I think he's going to do the same again to Turchi. I think he's extremely limited. I don't particularly rate any of these Italians that start popping up. They just pad records out in Italy. And then, I mean, we've seen on these Matchroom Italy shows, you, you bring over, you know, essentially... British fighters who were on the back of defeats and looking to restart their careers. And then they get the win nine times out of ten in the away corner. So I fully expect React Paul to, to get the win. And then I'm not sure what they're going to target next. I think they were talking about trying to get him a world title shot. So um, obviously, I think Brady Sinacoli or a couple of the belts. I think macabu has got one as well. So it's going to be interesting to see where they go the next step. Um whether they target that Makabu fight, I know they're open to fight Nicole as well. Why wouldn't you? Uh, so it's going to be interesting. Um, I think I assume the co well, I say the co main, it won't be that Lauren Price will probably be up there given she's, you know, they made a big deal about signing her. But Jermaine Brown, Zach Chelly's a great fight. Um, I think it, it's not a clash of styles as such, but, you know, Chelly is all action, you know, come forward, front foot whereas Brown is the complete opposite, bikes to box. And difficult one to call. I'll probably side with Jermaine Brown, actually. Um, seen him a couple of times, like what he can do. Pretty pretty decent boxer overall. Um, Chelly is, you know, again, quite exciting to watch, actually. Carries a bit of power. Um, battered, you know, that Jack Kilgannon a um, couple of months ago. Good fight for the English title. Really good. You, you can't ask for anything better. Uh, and Congo for Mella. Um, bit unsure on this one. Not in a sense of, you know, I think some people are raving over it when actually Four Mella's known for getting beat. He got he got battered off Ben and he got battered off Sean Porter. And that's why he's known. He's got a good chin. Um Congo obviously was I wouldn't say outclassed, but was, you know, was beaten by McKinson. So I guess it's it's a steady fight. It's probably, you know, it's a good domestic fight, I guess, if you were to, to describe it as that. I would think Congo's got too much for, for Formella, who last time I saw him was pretty basic against Ben and just a shot after shot, got a fantastic chin. Um, would, lo- would love to know who Pigford was fighting because I think he's really exciting to watch. But ultimately, how good is he? Because he's, you know, he stopped every all but one of his opponents in nineteen fights, but he's not really boxed any. Aaron Morgan's his best win. Um, he's not really boxed anybody else of real note. So I can't see him being in with somebody who's going to be, you know, of any sort of test this weekend. The good thing is, though, is he's now getting some activity and getting some momentum. This will be his fourth fight in a year which prior to that was nigh unheard of for Pigford. Um, anyone with that sort of power is dangerous. And he'll be coming in, you know, to a, a pretty decent 154 division domestically. So, yeah, I've no doubt he'll probably get a stoppage win on Saturday. And who knows what he'll go on to next, but he's got to start up in his level of opponent. Otherwise, you know, it, it's going to be a bit like that. You know, a bit like Belanga in a way, you know, a bit of a, a fad, you know, one trick pony, you know, against mm-hmm. average opposition, he's going to be knocking him out. Uh, and then when they step him up, what has he got? So I'll try and find out who he's got actually, uh, Pigford. And then, yeah, it's for me, it's got to be the domestic scene going forward. Has to be. Otherwise, what are you boxing for? You're going to try and build a record 40 and 0 against absolute nobodies? Don't think Sky will put up with that. So, yeah, time to step up, Pigford. Well, maybe not this weekend, Ozzy. If Yimmy Yappy is to be believed, he says Pigford's injured, not fighting. Fucking hell. Right. What a waste of time that was, just talking about that then. But, um, but yeah, right. Well, that's a shame then. But uh, do you know what? It sums up his career in a nutshell. 
you know, he gets a bit of momentum and then bang, an injury. Fingers crossed it isn't too serious and they can get him out, you know, later this year. But my point still stands is that you, you can't keep fighting these sort of level of opponents. You've got to take that chance and you've got to step up. And there's plenty of fights domestically that'll be good for him. OK, we shall see and watch with interest. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the react poor. Hopefully he'll get the knockout, which I think he will. Talking of knockouts, perhaps we'll see one next weekend in Japan. Our biggest fight of the week, rather than the weekend, Tuesday the 7th of June. Super Arena, Saitama, Japan, will be on in the afternoon for us. We'll sack off the undercard. Not really too bothered about that. WBC, WBA, IBF, Bantamweight titles on the line for the big rematch. Now you are in your way, 22-0 against Nonito Donaire, 42-6. In your way's career, moving in slightly odd directions, Andy, before this at least. I suppose this is a, a natural direction for him to move in. I don't really think top rank knows what to do with him. I think he'll beat Donair clearly on points, winning most of the rounds. It'll be competitive. Don't think he'll stop him, but it'll be the onus will be on top rank after this then to move him on forward. Not that he'll be looking past an opponent like Donair, but to try and finally do something with Inuex. because I think they're struggling a little bit. Yeah, I think also as well, I think possibly... Aram has signed him at the wrong time. I mean, they signed him in uh, November 2019, which was after this, uh, after the first fight with Denier. COVID hit. Then he said uh, Jason Maloney, and then was it Michael Desmer, uh, Desmarinis, and there was someone else, I think, uh, based out of Japan, or, you know, or, or a fight in Japan, basically. It might just come down to the fact is he just kind of get him the opponents, possibly, at this point. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head who the other uh, champions are at this point, but I think it's... Is it Paul Butler got the WBO? So was it Casemiro? Maybe got stripped to the belt. Um, obviously, Daniel's got the other the WBC. I think he had the the win against Ubali. So it was probably maybe the, the ideal fight to get made at this point. And to be honest, considering how the first fight went, I, I'm really looking forward to this. There was some talk as well, just to let the people know, um, especially for the UK listeners anyway. At least this fight could be free air on YouTube. From what I've been hearing, so we'll wait and see how it goes. Um, it is. It it's is. definitely happening, it's mate, on, yeah. It's on the, it's on the top-ranked YouTube um, for UK only. Oh, UK only, so that's fantastic. So it's a bit like PBC doing a solid mm -hmm. for the Castagno-Charlo fight and that, so that's good news. Plus it'll be on, like, midday, possibly, uh, maybe late morning, so that's an ideal time for us. Uh, so that's great. But as I say, so, uh, going into the first fight, at least, you know, I expected Denier to get beaten. Badly, to be honest with you, and considering how he got dropped by that body shot and you see it saw it at the fight, it's testament to, you know, to how fucking a warrior that he, you know, he is. And plus, he gave Inoue, I would say at this point, his toughest fight of his career. I mean, he's, he's broke up his optimal bone, I believe, broke his nose. Inoue's, so I think he's given him his toughest fight to date, uh, to be honest with you. So, coming into this, considering how Denier's looking, actually, how, how the hell can you keep writing this guy off, really? Bonafide legend of the sport, gentleman to boot. I don't care if he's 39 or 40 year old, but I think, he, I think he's got still at this point enough about him to put this fight at least to the cards and just roll the dice at that point. But I'm going to say it's again another close, clear, but competitive fight. I'll say Inoue gets the decision um, purely based off the fact that I think Denier just looked. Just, he's just looked edgeless to me, at least, shall I say. I mean, I expected him to beat off O'Bally, and the, you know, the, the manner of what he beat him was, was emphatic. I expected him to get beat badly off Inoue, as I said. Look how he how he saw it the fight, smashed up the Inoue a wee bit, got, badly hurt himself to the body, got up. So, I think as well, it's a must-win situation for Denny as well. If he loses his fight, I think he retires. If he, if he does win, I... I but I would think he maybe retires as well, actually, to be honest with me. How, how, can he, how can he even better by becoming close to be an undisputed champion? I mean, forget about the WBO belt, right? Because the champion that had it lost it because of, I can't remember if it was the weight or whatever it was at this point. But Butler's been, you know, he's been posted that belt. So this, this is the, you know, the main fight between the two champs, the two belt holders as such. Um, I think Inoue will, will win on points again. Uh, Denier will be his classy self. Social, he's got a bit of ability about him. But I just think it might just come down to freshness at the end of the day. I think Inoue might just see it out down the stretch. So I'll say Inoue on points. All right, man. That's good to know, Steve. That is mm. one of our picks. That's one of Ooh. our picks. Yeah, um, boring stuff for me, Matty. I'm going for new way on points actually as well. Although I think it'll be wide points. I think he, I don't think he's got enough to. Well, he's clearly got enough to stop anybody. But Donair, 
He's like the miracle man coming back after the first fight, knocking out Gabolo in the fourth round. I think Ubali was the fourth round as well. Can't write this guy off at all. The body shot might be a precursor of things to come in the first fight. But I think that Inouye, it's going to be close, competitive. But as the fight wears on, Donaire might find it heavy weather. I think Inouye will be improved from the first fight. And the better fighter at this stage of their career, uh, as as goes, will will get the win. So Inouye for me on points wide, maybe 118, 110, 117, 111 thrown in there. Donnell never stopped trying, but I think that maybe his time's coming to an end. And Inouye is obviously just right in the peak of his powers. Um, one thing I asked... Actually, Matty, I'll ask you quickly. I asked the boys in the Patreon call-in last night. Do you think, what, what's Inoue's weight ceiling, do you think? How far can he go up? Obviously, he started off at whatever it was, light flyweight, flyweight. He's up at Bantam now. How far can he go up before he starts to really feel the heat? Well, I'll tell you what, Steve. Um, I, I think he has at least one more weight class to go. And I was mm. kind of thinking uh, amidst the conversation here, and this will be a sidebar um, a, a little bit. Uh, but I, I think that... If he comes through this um, strong, um, I don't know how long his top rank deal is, but I would love to see Inoue against Fulton. I just thought of that fight, and I'm like, that's a hot fight, man. That's a hot fight. Um, I think Inoue's close to his children in terms of weight, to be honest with you as well, mate. I, I thought maybe Bannon weight would be his max. Um, doesn't look like he's got a lot of growing at me. He's but is he now, 27? He's... You know, getting up in must age be, yeah, uh, must be something like, like that. Yeah, we'll see. you just wonder how much growing is still 29? going. Twenty nine, twenty nine. There we go, yeah. mate. Like I yeah. said, one more, one more weight class. You yeah, know. possibly. I mean, he's such a tremendous talent. It's hard to think that oh, he's not going to be good one cla- weight class but higher. At the same time, though, as you've got the situation again, mate, anyway, that Bob Arum is his promoter. It's a bit like you know when we mentioned that, actually, but there's own Mexico card next week. But Eddie signed the uh, Kai Gucci. Like flyweight champion, that that sign made no sense to me whatsoever. Eddie's like maybe promoted up with two of his fights. This would be his second fight, I think. It makes no sense to me as to why Eddie signed him. It's a bit like anyway with Bob Arm and that. You mentioned the Fulton fight, for example. How's that fight going to happen unless there's a willingness by both? Oh, no, I, you know I, you know I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But uh, it doesn't hurt to dream. But, yeah, uh, uh, as far as uh, as far as this fight goes, uh, what's interesting with you guys going points, and I actually think I'm leaning that way too. Um, and Oz, I think you'll get you'll find this interesting. Uh, right now, it's paying uh, almost four to one for Inoue to win on points right now with get knockout with on knockout it. paying minus one eighty five. I've seen that line move. I actually saw it open at about plus four fifty. So yeah, people have been getting on that bet. My um, chucking up, chucking more. Than I, $2, I'm with you. I, I am with you on that one. I, I I'm with you on that one for the fight just uh, to go uh, to go the distance. Uh, it's paying almost two and a half to one just for the fight to go the distance. If you if you think that there might be a chance that uh, that Donaire uh, finds a way to outbox him or something in there, uh, Nonito's so clever, you never know. So those are cl- uh, interesting. Uh, the, the they uh, the most uh, as far as the halves, uh, they they think it's more likely that Inoue is going to win in the uh, the last half of the fight. For me though, I'm with you guys. I think we'll see kind of a repeat of the first one with maybe just a little bit of uh, Donaire's age show, showing, but I still think he's one of the most durable fighters in the sport. Um, Walters is the only guy uh, who's, who's really blasted him. So um, I, I think that you got to run with uh, Inouye on points on this one as well. Yeah, Walters, there's a conversation for another day. Des says Donaire is getting older now and had a few camps since the first fight. I think he'll get stopped. G Poker as well says, I'm saying Inoue by KO this time. Orbital break, Ozzy, played a huge part in the first fight. Do you see Donaire being able to last the distance in the rematch? No, I think Inoue will stop him, actually. Um, I think, you know, Donaire was badly hurt to the body last time round. And you have got to factor in that injury um, to Inoue. So, yeah, I think he's just going to... I can see it being quite similar to the first fight, actually. Uh, but towards the back end... I think in a way he'll just put his foot on the gas and will get him out of there because let's have it right, if he wasn't nursing that injury, um and you would think he would have put his foot on the gas without a doubt to get him out of there, but quite rightly um held off and didn't do that. The one thing you would say as well is I, I can't see Donero boxing him and I forget what round it was. Was it round nine or ten where it in a way, basically walked onto a left hook and it would have slept anybody mm. else in that division and he just brushed it off. 
as if like it didn't even land. And so his chin is legit because Donaire's power is legit. So I, I just don't see a way that Donaire can get can get the win. And I do feel it'll pan out like the first fight. Donaire will ultimately have success because I think in a way he's happy to take one to ultimately land one at times. And we know Donaire is there, but I felt a good point was made that Donaire is only getting older. And whilst he lives the life, you know, always in impeccable shape, um, father time does catch up. And maybe, you know, just that bit extra on the body, a couple of camps, you know, lengthy camps, two fights, and then you're coming into this. It may be just one step too far, but there will be no shame in that whatsoever, by the way. And I think I've got to say, you know, if he does win, um, I know Andy mentioned about retiring. I think the trilogy because well would be huge then, and I just couldn't see him retiring on that. Um, if he does fall short, I think regardless of what manner it is, that's then when I'd like to see him walk away. Um, and you know, I had a fantastic career. Um, you know, ultimate showman, entertainer, quality fighter, probably one of the most likable people in boxing as well. It's rare. Well, I don't know anybody, you know, who you'll have a conversation with who has a bad word to say about Nanito Donaire, which is rare in this sort of sport when it's full of wankers and pillocks and seedy people. Um, Donaire, you know, is, you know, sets, you know, really does set the standard. So, yeah, I do think he falls short against in a way. Um, I think he gets stopped, you know, in the second half of the fight, but there will be no shame in that whatsoever. Well, I, here, a couple of points uh, real quick to make. One, just, just as far as Donaire goes, if there wasn't a guy named Manny Pacquiao, Nonito Donaire is the greatest Filipino fighter in history. Okay, uh, and that, that's a hell yeah, of a mark. Yeah. That's a hell of a mark because they've had some great fighters. Um, but I'll, one thing why you don't want to count him out entirely is look in the history of good counterpunchers in rematches. A good counter puncher in a rematch generally does very strong. Recently, Charlo versus Castaño. You go back, you got uh, 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 Sergio Martinez against Paul Williams. Uh, all sorts of examples here, there, and everywhere throughout uh, boxing history. He did learn from that first fight, so don't count out the fact that Donaire has picked out a few movements and a few key shots that he can use against Inoue that are going to keep this fight interesting. If that is the case, then we're in for one hell of a fight, that's for sure. I'm waving now, man. I don't know whether to go for a new A stoppage or not. The boys are convincing me. I'm seeing a lot of good people in the chat and a lot of our souls too. I bet you go go, I bet you were easily fucking convinced in school, baby. Most Steve will go for a fight run the thing and we'll set a fire with the fucking stores, <laughs> <laughs> you were easily late as a kid. Steve, you do have a lead to protect here. You uh, are currently sitting at 49 to Rob's 44, Andy's 42, and my 35. So uh, you got a bit of room there, but um, you, you are on, uh, you're stretching out here with a couple of perfect weeks back to back. On, Jason Steve. Chahal, that I was going to mention Jerry Penaloso, and I thought, no, I'll not say that. I love Jerry Penaloso, but no. Um... Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, it's Torres, man. Jed Torres was top Jed 10. Torres. Jenny, Jerry Penaloso was a good fighter, man. So hang on. I've, what's the points again, Matty? Oh, I've got a lead to protect. It. Yeah, you're up, on, you're up by five on Rob. You're up by five. Seven on Andy. Oh, sorry. I thought you were referring to Joe Kennedy's prediction league, where I'm also top. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, look at that. The cream <laughs> always rises to the top, Steve. They slag I tell you what, I'm going to milk this, man. They slagged me for years about being a shit prediction. There I am sitting high and mighty. I know I'm going to drop down again, so I'm going to enjoy the moment. Matty, while it's there, <laughs> there we are, going to be the king. Sticking with the no in way on points? Nah, I'm going to go for way stoppage to um, change, it, change it to stoppage okay. to, to uh, spice things up a bit. Get on the right. spice. Where's Rob? You know, per usual. He's know. doing community He's in... service. Aye, aye, aye. He's painting a wall or something this week, or a fence. The black and tans <laughs> got hot and fucked me. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we are. Let's give a shout out to the boys quickly on Joe's prediction league. So, you got Wellings at the top there. And Ted's fallen from the top, fallen from Grace. Ben, Andrew McCormick, Greg, Justin from North Carolina. Uh, John O'Donovan, Ryan Deal, Mojo, DeGoat, Danny Young, shout out to him, Kevin, Joe Kay, Jim, uh, Andy Patterson there, Mike Wrigley, Declan Graffin, James Windsor and Benjamin. 
That's Ben Faruqi. And then the losers down the bottom here, we've got John UK, Holly, Dave Wilson, Dan, Jesus Matthew Rob Kelly, <laughs> Patrick, Gary Taylor, David Damo, Craig, Chris, C. Lamont, Ricky Graville, <laughs> Owen, <laughs> Matty. <laughs> That's a four-way tie, by the way, right there. So thanks for, <laughs> thanks for all those people hanging with me. And thanks for Hattam for taking one for the team. Hattam yeah, you, as well. Beautiful Egyptian fuck and you. And George. George down at nineteenth, so there we go. That's the that's the league for this week. Um, uh, oh, that's hurt. That, that's that's painful. <laughs> that, that that hurts. What, where do they get the uh, these other predictions from? Where should, should I be taking certain other things more seriously? I don't jo- know. Yeah, Joe Joe Kennedy every week. Fair play to him. He's he's bitten off more than he can chew. I think, but he's still pitching. He he takes the results every week. He makes sure everyone puts in their scores. He totals it all up on the spreadsheet. It's all going on, Matty. Well, before you guys, uh, you know, uh, bail out on this, we do have another pick, Steve. We do have oh, another one. Cool, and, I, cause I, and I had to troll all through these cards up and down next week looking for something uh, that where it might be a little bit up in the air. And I found myself going to the uh, Showtime card from Verona, New York, Showbox card where Elvis Garcia was going to be on it, but uh, he tested positive for some junk. Uh, and we're going to a fight between two undefeated heavyweights, Steve. Uh, over eight rounds, Igor Plivako <laughs> versus Gunner Colbin Christensen. Yeah, what is this shit, by? You told me to go research it. I had to look at that and say, I didn't see this fucking listed anyway. So what the fuck's the story with this? I, I, it's, uh, it's listed on ESPN, and if it gets cancelled, who cares? ESPN is both- a fight. Yeah, that Andy, they're, really both out by they're, both, they're both undefeated, Andy. They're both undefeated, and that, that's it's the most interesting thing I could find. So, um, yeah, let's start with the uh, the leader in the clubhouse. So, Steve, who do you have in this battle between <laughs> undefeated heavyweight juggernauts? This on the fucking list for next week. Yeah, I'm not playing then. Fuck you, man. We well, need to get him on the list. Right, let's have a look here. List, man. What the fuck is this one? <laughs> I mean, this... <laughs> this is outrageous, man. I've I've done nothing about these guys. I don't one's one's a Ukrainian boxer, the other one's a Icelandic person. There you go. There you go. So what what you card is it? It's it's Let's a showbox a card. It's on a showbox card. Uh, it's not even on box stick, Matty. It's, it's not... but it's this is so this show the showbox this... card. Is June that one from Verona, New York, is Bakadir Jalalov versus Jack Mulawayi. Yep, Elvis Garcia. So, uh, so why are these two mentioned on it in Boxrec? Because uh, Boxrec and and uh, no, it doesn't no, always no, no, have no, no. this. I'm I'm yeah. hoping that we're going to get this big build up. Somebody's going to put in the chat. Andy, that fight's been postponed. It doesn't. Hey, reason. it doesn't matter, Andy. It's, this is on Steve right now. We're wasting valuable time that Steve could be spending sleeping. <sighs> this is awful. Right. He's been spending the like weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Igor Plavako, right, let's have a look. So he's 7-0 and with four knockouts, Ukrainian, based in Brooklyn, managed by David McWhorter, and he's oh. going in against Gunnar Gunnar Colbin, Colbin Christensen, right, who's the, promoted by Dimitri Salita. Colbin Christensen, right. It sounds like one of those freak shows, you know, like the, the Giants. Years, right, yeah. so, by so, anyway. thank, thank God for copy and paste. That's all I can say, Steve. Yeah, I know. So, right, okay, so he's... An Icelandic, 12-0 and 0 with six knockouts. Hasn't he fought he's, two and a half years? He hasn't fought in two and a half years. He's fought in Hungary, Finland, Sweden, Finland, Denmark. Right, knockout for the Ukrainian for me. Plavako by knockout. All right. This is a disgrace of a prediction. As, There's going to be mutiny in the, in the Nutters awful. League. This is awful. This. awful. Absolutely Awful. This fight isn't even. Do we? Can we confirm this is definitely going ahead? It's not even listed, mate. Anyway, I don't know where Mike is going. Exactly, to that's what I mean. Yeah, it's. It is. If you go to if you go to ESPN.com's boxing schedule, it is on the Showtime card from Ju- on June tenth from Verona, New York. Mate, hey, I'm working with loads of Ukrainians just now, mate. I'm going to ask one of them if I can murder you for cash. <laughs> <laughs> well, CHR yeah, says gonna... Christensen's injured. Well, that's a shame because so it's off. Son of a bitch! Yes, I think he's Suck trolling. It. I think he's trolling. There, yeah. <clears throat> Take, we're taking those picks, Andy. Give it to me. <sighs> no, you're not getting up the fucking rusty keyhole anyway. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make it short and sweet. Uh, like two seconds, I'll take uh, uh, Plevkov. Sorry, Plevko or knockout. 
Yeah, uh, he's definitely not Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll watch. Mate, I was about the Ukraine fought uh, twenty eighteen. Then his next fight after that was twenty twenty one. So he's not that most active as well, you know. So I'm. Go- I think that the, I think that uh, that big Icelandic son of a bitch is going to last the distance. I'm going with the Ukrainian by decision. Okay, fair enough. That'll do. What about Rob? Who's going to break the news to him about this one? <laughs> I don't know what to say about poor Rob. I'm just I'm just glad that he's serving his community. Jid can. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> right, is that all of them? Is that all the fights for next week, or have I missed anything? I'm sure there's other things going on, Steve, but I don't think there's anything that, that matters. Uh, you got the Berlanga, uh, the Trevor Bryant card. There's a card in Atlanta with Peter Dobson, Rodrigo, D- uh, Damian Correa. Their welterweights over 10 rounds. Oh, Quantavius Cash is on that. I think I've seen him before. Um and, da, 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 yeah. uh, there's a Zone Mexico City card going oh, on, oh, on fuck June t- on June 10th. Uh, Hiruti Kayaguchi versus Esteban Bermudez uh, over 12 rounds for Kayaguchi's uh, uh, junior lightweight title. I mentioned yeah. this fight to you that Kayaguchi. You know, it's an odd signing for Eddie. Actually, to be honest, I don't know why he signed them, but uh, Bermudez. He's, he's okay, but Kai Gucci's meant to be one of the top guys, so you, I'd expect him to win, possibly stoppage. Bermuda's his only good win is that out of nowhere knockout win that he had, and he was way behind on the cards. Well, that was couple, that was last fight, couple fights ago. And I yeah, can't I, I think Kai Gucci broke his hand fighting that. Was it Axel Vega? He was quite. He's like four foot five or something. Yeah, that four foot nine inch little fucker. Yeah. I, yes, yes, yes. I had yes, him yes, top yeah. of the head a few times. Maybe four foot hand. nine. Yeah, it was, oh, it sounds made, like baby Jake Maslala. Do you remember like, exactly? I fucking like five man. This guy was a sport up. No, that's no. You're four, thinking of a different. Half. No, no, you... he's right. Maybe baby Jake was like four, like something like four, 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 ten, four. Eleven. This uh, Vega like four nine and a half. According to the box, right? Are you thinking El of the Mini, right guy? El this, Mini. This is a hundred and thirty pound fight, and I think you're thinking of a hundred and eight pound fight. Who? Who are you talking about? Baby Jamie Lala was a fucking light flyweight. Yeah, he fought uh, Dave he's... Boy McCauley, didn't he? I think. Ah, and he also fought um, oh, the Scottish boy. What's he called? Oh, fuck. Pat Clinton. Right. There you are. Oh, hang on. Uh, I need uh, to get rid of Naked HD if, again. I'm interested to see if Eddie's in, in attendance for this one, actually. Nah, Eddie's just signing anybody up. Well, he's, it's, a, it's a co-promotion with Canelo Promotions as well, eh? Diego Pacheco's on the, on the undercard. There's mentioning Ian Napa. Do you remember him, Andy? He was a good yeah. little fighter, Ian yeah, Napa. Yeah, he was. He was a flyweight. He was no flyweight. Couldn't punch, champion. couldn't punch, but he fought Simone Maladrotto for the European title. Aye. He was a good good fighter, Napa. Domestic yeah, Floyd Mayweather for us. He was he very was. skillful, very skillful. Yep. Absolutely. Anyway, join us on the call. We have a special guest. It's Clark Griswold. Good evening. Live from holidays. Ooh. Holidays, is that what you're calling it, Rob? <laughs> yes, <laughs> books in the hotel. First thing he does, I need to speak to the lads. I haven't, even, I, haven't, I haven't even booked it to the hotel. I mean, no, what's it called? Oh, you're still in, like, you're still in double I mean, packing pa- the airport, right? No, like, I, mean, security. I mean, passport control here. I mean, but, passport uh, control, so I was only checking in to say a quick hello. No, I'm in Greece. I'm in Greece. <laughs> I'm just, but I'm in passport control. I haven't even got out of the hotel yet, so uh, I, mean, I said i just check in to say hello. Check your back. No, I'm only, I, honestly, I, I, you want me to get me divorced and I'm only just start, dropping in to say hello. Are you really ringing in from the passport control? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm in passport control. Here, hold on, let me, <laughs> see, let me show you, sir. <laughs> it, right? you better watch, Robbie. Get that is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Get some get subscribers up, Rob. Come on. Hey, do up some interest. Uh-huh. Who, are you, who are you taking in? Yeah, in yeah. a way, don't air, Rob. <laughs> uh, anyway, stop it. Boom. Ooh. You and stop it. I bite a bit. But, yeah, also I, it, I'll catch us later on. No worries, mate. Take it easy. Good to see you, Rob. Thanks very much. See you, then. Bye, 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 bye. Happy Rob Kelly there calling in from the airport. I bet he's going to abuse right this very second. <laughs> Who are you fucking phoning? <laughs> he should have done his Katie Taylor impression. <laughs> <laughs> Look live from the airport. He's looking with the wife and daughter in front of him there. He's like, I better phone out the boys here. He's going to get through there. True passport control. Straight on the pint. So that's what he's got to do. Smash the like for passport control, under. Oh, fuck passport. I hate passport control, man. Full of wankers. Hey, 
if Especially if we have any... since Brexit, by the way, they fucking hate us, by the way. See when we go abroad now, you have fucking British passport, you <laughs> cunts. You know, they, I'm telling you what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, well, welcome to how we feel. What, Italians? No, Americans, you dick. Yeah, but you deserve it, though, man. You just fucked up the world. You, know? <laughs> you guys don't deserve it, too? You've been, like, holding our hand all the way along since... Yeah, we've we tried to divorce ourselves like... for you, man. <laughs> like... you, know, you took over for... <laughs> You took over for what we were doing back in the 1800s, you know? We're like skipping through a field of daisies. Like, hey, you guys want to go with us uh, uh, into Afghanistan? Hey, yeah, sure, why not? Oh, yeah, but that's, that's Tony totally Blair's fault. Right, oh, yeah, in, in, your, in your own time, lads. Let's get on to Belly of the Week. <laughs> Episode 477, Belly of the Week. Andy's here. Rapping Rob Kelly, calling in from Passport Control. Matty's here, and so is Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of degenerates in the chat. Going back to last week, Andy, I know you enjoyed this moment. Javonta Davis, Jim Gray, going on down. Tell you what, there was a bit of an altercation between the two of them. And as I like to say, we'll never forget. I'm here, baby. I'm here. Whatever what they want to do, I'm here, baby. Ain't no safety on this Glock. You know? Ain't no safety on this Glock. And I got a lot of ammunition. The bomber tattooed on his back is, of course, a reference to his potent punch power and not in any way insensitive to the tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> Another productive day at work for me. <laughs> mate, you're, you're coining it in easy money, mate. You're sitting there with a cigar, swirling the brandy around about in the goblet. You're actually having fun of life, mate. Absolutely great life you have. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. Jesus oh, Christ. Jim Gray, man. So I need to find one out. Actually, Andy, someone said that Jim Gray got roasted back in the day. Not by Tony. We know about that one. But Johnny Tapia roasted him. So I'm going to have to try and find oh, right. that, apparently. What fight was that? I'm, be, have a, have a quick I'm not Tapia sure. Fight. I heard it mentioned during the week. I can't remember by who. But apparently he roasted Jim Gray over something. So I'm going to try and find that one out for next week, if I can. Good stuff. Because I may have a few of the fights on my, on my hard drive somewhere. Probably this isn't he... he checked, boys. They didn't worry about that, you know. Yeah, <laughs> probably because he jacked some uh, Johnny's eight ball. Sure, what it was. It was some man, Johnny fucking Tapia, man, for the parties, eh? Fuck me. Dude, can you imagine how good he would have been if he hadn't been fucked up on drugs and party mm. and shit? I'm yeah. a fucking yeah. animal, dude. Yeah, like yeah. Tony Ayala? Yeah, you know Tony Ayala's another one, mate. He was mm-hmm. fucking absolute roasted a boy in that. Fucking belief to have fought absolutely high on heroin for the best part of his pro career. Unbelievable. That's right. And he was on the verge of fighting, who was it? David, David Moore? And then they couldn't get the fight because he ended up doing the rape charge and then fucking Roberto Duran stepped in and fucked up more beyond belief. Right. Just shows you how fucking opportunities can arise like that, you know? And just another example of why you shouldn't rape. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I mean, no disrespect to, to any rapists out there, but I mean, it, it has to be said, Matty, I suppose. Yeah, don't rape. Yeah, for yeah. anyone that's listening, uh, that's don't good rape. advice when you think about it. That's good yeah, advice. Solid advice. We're, yeah. we're, here, we're here to be productive members of society and uh, provide a positive uh, atmosphere for all. And uh, we're here to tell the listeners not to rape. This is yeah. weird. It is weird. Uh, it's not going to get any better, I'm afraid. Oh, Just fuck. the order of the belly of the weeks, but here we go. Gas, Gas Kia Davis oh, is no. celebrating Ebbs this week. He says, we were once supporters, followers, sharers, retweeters, and you now have brothers, sisters, family, and best friends. You're not alone. The environment has changed. The goals have got bigger, and they remain the same. Believe, achieve. We are with you, Ebony. Hashtag family. Hashtag UK. Hearts. Kisses. I'm quite concerned about this guy. He's like, he's he's like yeah, she, she, he, she's moving to the UK. She's going to end up in his fucking basement without a doubt because I fucking worry. I mean, what the hell is this message about? This guy's married, he's got kids, and he's like bowing down to some fucking Australian boxer that he's met ultimately through Twitter, and he's got God knows what sort of fantasies about her, but I don't know, but... This guy, I tell you, if you send him on, if you send him on a crime watch wanted board, it's not going to be for money laundering, is it? Likewise to his pal Stacey as well. Mate, it's going to be for fucking kidnap. He was stuffing those drawers. I bet you by hey. before he goes to bed that night. Oh, this, ab- absolutely, yeah, one hundred percent. This guy sniffing bras, knickers, anything, bridges. This guy, Evs, Big Daddy Brown, in a three-way, make it happen. <sighs> That's a sight to behold. He's not the only one, boys. He's not the only one. (laughs) Lee the bald guy. My fan club will love this one. Please, people, give Ebony Bridges some hate. Funny thing is, 90% of you work a 9-5, and although I'm sure has its stresses, 
You've got no idea the amount of hard work she puts in, stresses that come with it. You'd all crumble under the pressure. One hundred percent. Hashtag boxing. But so, see, she's she's moved herself full time to the UK now, apparently as well. Mm-hmm. Mm. The fucking terrible. losers. They're absolute losers. I mean, A refers to himself as Lee the bald guy. I mean, who does that? What's that Andy, Andy. Andy the bald guy? Yeah. And then and then he puts my fan club will love this one. So he he actually enjoys the you know the the pervy, the pervy comments in being called a nonce and a paedophile and a fucking yeah, just, all just, sorts. Just to clarify, you're not talking about Andy the bald guy on the podcast, by the way, okay? That's just that's not me you're talking about, right? Just, just to make that absolutely clear to everybody. So, sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm, sta- I'm stating that it's like you going, yeah, uh, I'm referring to yourself as Andy the bald guy, like this weirdo, Lee the bald guy. And then, yeah, I mean, the, the praising of all this, you know, like all the stress that she does. She was begging on Twitter a few days ago, asked, trying to get a fucking car given to her. I mean, yeah, she, oh, honestly, the weirdos. They've got this fantasy that, you know, they, th- she, they think they'll end up jumping into bed with her. Far fucking from it. Absolutely no chance. But ultimately, these are the losers that pay 25 quid for fucking if she stuck her sweaty socks on some sort of platform. These would be buying it. Well, you know, Oz, it, it, it's funny, like, so, so she needed money for a car, like, it's crazy, so here she is suffering for the thing that she loves, and, and much to go back to the uh, the comparison that Gad made between her and Ali, I remember a time when Ali once had to suffer for what he loved, too, so these parallels, uh, they, they just continue. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, I, I tell you, it's well. There's, there's plenty for them to spend their money on anyway, because Paul Rafter he sent this into me. Ebony loves meeting her fans, and and he's he's excited for July the fifteenth. Here we are, the prices. We've got the bronze, forty-two pound, includes a photo and meet and greet with Ebbs. The silver, sixty-two pounds, photo meet and greet, and an ed, uh, limited edition photo frame. And the gold, hundred twenty pound, only thirty available. Includes photo, extended meet and greet, extended, maybe extended, all right, Lim- limited edition photo frame, <laughs> beat the queues, priority access, and a VIP right, meal right. with Ebony before the show. Oh, and extended bit, tells me that about four inches. One, one of these freaks will have two meals with Ebony, and uh, the last one won't be good. <laughs> Fucking pervert. Oh, anyway, let's move on from Ebs. That's enough. That's enough of her for this evening. Now, Ricky Gavril sent this one in. Uh, Leonard Ellaby going in on Eddie Hearn. Before we play the clip, actually, Andy, you sent me one of Eddie this week going in on Leonard. So let's have a listen to this first of yes. all before we play Leonard's response. I've always said, like, I don't have a problem with Leonard. I, I want to, you know, I think we should, should look to cheer him up a little bit, you know, and maybe even sing him a song. I don't know, you know. What song? I don't know, something like... In our sunshine when tanks gone Feel the pain when he goes away In our sunshine when tanks gone Oh Leonard Ellerby Why are you so obsessed with me? Something like that Not the worst Bill <laughs> Withers ever That's actually like, good stuff for me Not the like. worst <laughs> Bill Withers ever It's actually very very good I must admit But see at the same time See me dropping that shit Right <laughs> Nay wonder maybe there's any business with him Right, I, I see the two guys during the WhatsApp chat during the week there. Like, they wonder he can't get big fights made in America. He goes out his road to antagonise, to bitch, to demean, and just outright verbally try and make himself look better than it. But I mean, he was telling Leonard, Leonard Ellaby there last week about it was saying is, hey, nobody knows who you are. I am, you know, people know me or I type of shit and that. I'm like, Eddie, you're just a promoter. Fucking let the fighters fight, but... He can't kind of help himself, but we'll, we'll, we'll hear Uncle Leonard's response, uh, no doubt, very soon. He did that, as Ben says, he practiced that all night long. He's even had that in his Rolodex somewhere, fucking ready to get pulled out. He's had that one fucking redialed. Don't yeah. you worry about that. Just just wait for Ellerby to come back with another Bill Withers, you know, given that uh, all of these fighters uh, use Eddie and then they evacuate as soon as they have a chance to make fucking... money, you know. Gonna keep on using me. <laughs> Until you use me up. I'll bring up uh, I'll bring up Eddie later on in that because I uh, the Bella had a go up as well for the composers talk as well. So Eddie. He's getting it tough, dog, especially man. from Len. Now Len wasn't singing, but he was getting stuck in. This is the kind of content I'm interested in now from all Ellaby. You haven't you haven't made no big fights yet. 
and as it relates to his knowledge of understanding how to um, match fights, look what he did to Anthony Joshua. You know, I feel really bad. Joshua's a, a nice young man, and I think he's a terrific fighter. But here it is. There's no promoter that would put their fighter, as big as Anthony Joshua is overseas, put him in with Andy Ruiz in three weeks' notice. Who does that? You know, you completely have, excuse my friends, fucked up Anthony Joshua's career. You kind of done the same thing with Canelo and this is why because when you look at Canelo and if we're honest when you look at Canelo Canelo was a much bigger fighter than he was when he signed to that app that nobody watches you know his numbers have gone down drastically if you look at his last pay-per-view fight just recently with Baval it was trash mm -hmm. you know uh, Alvarez and, and Plant just did between 750 and 800,000 mm -hmm. You know, they did like a third of that, almost a third, a little, a little over 300,000. You know, you look at the live gate. They did 18 million with, um, with, he did 18 million with Plant. This gate right here wasn't even $9 million. And it's just an example of that uh, Canelo's popularity has gone down drastically because, again, he signed to an app that nobody watches. So all the fighters over there, they, they're not getting the visibility that they deserve. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody watches the zone. Nobody watches the zone. And he was the same guy that said pay-per-view was dead and, and spent a bunch of money on all these slogans. And it's just, again, he's a clown. And everyone knows that. That's why you just laugh. And I'm not going to go back and forth with him because he know what time of day it is. It, when did the beef start? Do you recall when, when did, what was the? He know what it is. He, he and it's something very personal. And and I I I gave him a phone call. Mm. I gave him a phone call a while ago. He know what time of day it is. And it's just that, again, he he he, again. I don't want to go back and I mean back into all of that because again, I just try to, I try to be as professional as I possibly can. But that's the one guy that I can honestly say that if I had the opportunity, I stump him out. Mm. Wow. <laughs> by the way, can I say something? Fuck. He just summed it up beautifully there, by the way. He made it personal. Eddie has always done that. When he kind of get his own fucking way, he turns the fucking the mouth, the charm on it, or the fucking witty banter, and fucks it right into you, by the way. He gets all these fucking wee minions up on Twitter doing the same fucking thing. Remember the kind of sh uh, the, the Shirley Winkle comments related to Shirley Finkel with regards to the the, the, the the, the Wilder Joshua uh, uh, fight, it got so bad and so personal that Wilder and Finkel fucked off Eddie and it got to the desperation stage after a low ball offers that they had to get Daddy, the fucking man who is Barry Hearn, who is still respected apparently by some, you know, some of the head shed to try and get in there to salvage the deal because fucking golden child can he do it? He can't keep his mouth shut. He can't keep his fucking self out of other people's business and just be quiet for a fucking couple of weeks and do his fucking job. But no, he's at front and centre of every interview, talking up everything else apart from his own fucking business. Eddie, good evening. Make your own fights, get your own stable and order, and whatever everybody said about Canelo and Joshua is absolutely spot on. Good evening to you, prick. Good evening, Eddie. Where do we move on from that then? To this, perhaps. Josie Fajeo, THB, THM, DMN, THD. He's got a whole pile of them added on now. Congratulations to Tank Davis. Romero did not see my tweets that I directed to him, warning him. You boxed well, but you have character issues that affected your performance. There is no glory in never falling. Delete pride and arrogance. Be humble and you won't stumble again. Joe Kennedy nominated the doctor for this. He said, value the week for Rolly missing the sage advice of Dr. Joseph Ajayo, THC, PCP, DMT. <laughs> Joseph wasn't happy with this. He said, Joe Kennedy, what is the meaning of your abbreviation? Be careful, okay? <laughs> Be safe. <laughs> Be safe. <laughs> Be humble. <laughs> Look at the stumble. photo. <laughs> he's class, isn't he? <laughs> I love him, by the way. I love how white his trainers are. I mean, when I get brand new trainers like that, the last white, like, Maybe a fortnight before, I'm like, ah, fuck it, I'll just play football with the guys. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, the doctor. Good stuff from him. Uh, Brian King has nominated Michelle Joy Phelps. 
if anyone lives in Nevada and wants to go to, the, to this with me, please let me know. This would be fun and great material for my podcast. Zach Bagan's The Haunted Museum, downtown Las Vegas. Late night flashlight ghost to experience. <laughs> you better bring the flashlights with you. Is this what you put the lonely fans, is it? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You put the wheels hey. up here, I'd say. Well, 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 what's going to say? Thanks, you put the wheels up for the, for the lonely fans page, you think, mate? Ebb's yeah. missing a trick, Andy. She needs to get into this scene. Oh, mate, she's going to be on there shortly, without doubt. Oh, uh, I'm trying to go on there. <laughs> <laughs> Here she is again. There's, there's, there's chicks fucking paying off her mortgages in fucking two weeks. What the fuck am I doing wrong here? You know? <laughs> yeah. Announcement, she says, after years of dedicated content creation and mm. extensive research on subscription-based platforms, I'm taking the plunge and joining the largest and fastest growing platform for savvy creators of all categories. It's official. I'm joining OnlyFans. T minus 12 months and counting for cooter shots. There we are. There's Michelle. She's looking forward to it. Right, let's move on from that, shall we? That insanity. Onto this insanity. In the ring, Sunday in Gwoteng, South Africa. This isn't the one where the guy got all confused. I wasn't able to cut that in time. It's a bit unsettling, to be honest with you. So we'll maybe leave that out of value of the week. Uh, Jeff Magagane, 15 and 5, wins a rematch with Sith Sembizo Maduna, 10 and 3. Magagane celebrates after the 10th. And as Sith Sembizo's trainer, Michael Sidane enters the ring. Words are exchanged and Sidane lets his hands go. Well, I've managed to cut that one for you, so let's have a look at the action here. To spend a, a, a no more, no more two minutes without having thrown a punch because you are well ahead on point. Even Jeff's face does not show that he's been in this ring for 10 rounds. I'm not sure it's only for now. It fell as well. The unk, the unk throws fucking punches here. <laughs> he was letting his hands go, man. <laughs> I tell you what, I stayed. He waited till he was in proper punching distance and let the hands go away. What a prick. I know. Oh, it's unk, all right. James the Hammer Butler territory there, getting stuck into the poor fella. What, anyway. was with the, what was with the Omar Figueroa move at the end? Fucking putting his fucking left hand end up on the right side of his face while he's punching <laughs> yeah. with his right hand. No wonder his fighter fucking lost. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Good job, Unc. Uh, how to trade South Africa. Uh, continue with the South African theme. He says, Silent Belly of the Week. Remember the whole Porky Stomach Ulcer awesome story? I reckon that was a David Diamante. Porky went off for liposuction at, co at Cosmetic Beach, Turkey. Well, thanks for that how to trade. Throwing in that one there. A bit of Diamante does no harm to us. Uh, Eddie Hearn asked, which is the bigger fight out of Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin or Errol Spence versus Terence Crawford? Oh. He says, uh, Canelo versus Triple G by an absolute mile. Spence versus Crawford is a great fight for boxing, but anyone with a brain knows the answer to that question. Uh, Arsenal, Mercurial One has nominated it. Also, Andy, the conversation continued with better Q against Ring Licker in Chief. Oh, Everything no. Boxing. Everything Boxing thinks it's certainly, Andy. You'll be surprised to hear this. Triple G against <laughs> Canelo. Aussie, Ring please. Licker in I've, Chief. I've, I've already <laughs> fucking said my piece in Eddie Hearn, but... I'll let you take away, mate, on the bum spider crawling at the woodwork here to get involved. He's gasping for oh. the day to me. Oh, little virgin, man. I'm sorry. I know he's 16, 17 years old, kid, man, but fuck me, man. Go get your hole. Fucking, fucking hell. Jesus. Yeah, man. it's a. Uh, look, I, I mean, at least there's some logic behind it, but come on. I mean, you know, Ellaby said it right. You know, numbers are shrinking. You know, Dazone are happy to pump out numbers about Katie Taylor drawing in a million viewers worldwide. But then when it comes to the first pay-per-view buys, radio silence, you know, and it's just the, the typical Hearn thing of alluding to numbers. You know, he's happy to mock other people's numbers. Yet when it comes to that, I mean, you know what? For me, Spence Crawford, you know, it will sell out immediately. Um, the thing it is, will mate, do. I know you're an NFL fan as well, because you, you know Jerry Jones, he'll fucking bid for that fight to get it in Dallas, Texas. Easy, easy. Is that 90,000 in that stadium? Possibly even more? I think, I think sell, so, yeah. Sell easy money, man. Easy money. Yeah. 
that, 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 that will that will sell out. I mean, it will do huge amounts of buys. This this is you know this is a massive massive fight, Spence Crawford. Huge, you know. You, name me, you know. I, I'm trying to think, you know, probably in the last. In terms of quality as well, a, a better fight recently, you know, in, in say even the last probably ten years. This it's is with a pack over this year on me. That's what it is. Correct. Yeah, and as well, this is happening when they're both arguably in the prime as well. Not one of them's washed, and they've waited years for it. Yes, would we have liked to happen it a bit earlier? Of course. But if this happens this year, this cannot really happen at a better time. Now, comparing that to Canelo against Golovkin. They're selling this third fight on the basis that Canelo got beat and Golovkin came through a fight in um, in Japan. When in that as well, he had some rough moments as well. And ultimately, Canelo got beat at light. Canelo got beat at light heavyweight, not in fucking um, not in what's it called? You know, down at one sixty eight. This fight, you know, no one is clambering for it. When it was mentioned, I thought, why? It's just not of interest to me whatsoever. You know. No, I'm not saying no one cares because they will and people will watch it. I've, Canelo is essentially what Joshua is. You could put him in with a pig, a cow, and people will pay to watch it and will buy tickets, pay-per-views. They're not bothered. But in this instance, he's just using what's happened previously. But I think, you know, with that, um, it's going to be interesting to see what platform it lands on. What did they say? Um what platform did they think it'll land on? Spence Crawford. Half right. Showtime, mate. Showtime, right. Yeah. So I was going to say, oh, so yeah, they're no, not going right. to have the ES- they, they won't have the ESPN machine um, pumping stuff out, but at the same time as well. Showtime's putting um, a face on as well, though, mate, at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. You will be able to order it off of regular cable without going mm. through an app, which, be as fight- LRB said, it, it does not help. It, it'll, it be, does it'll be not fight help. TV in the UK as yeah. well, mate. So that, you're talking about 10, 12 quid. That's no Sky Sports 25, 30 quid that you need to pay out, you mm. know. And chances this- are possibly, possibly, because mm. of how we got to Charlo Castaño. We could get it free. No way. Same, I don't think for that same, one. Listen, well, I was not got a, I was not got a, um, a TV outlet in the UK, right? No. So he's either he could either put it out pay per view on Fight TV, or he gives it to us free on YouTube, or he puts it on YouTube pay per view. Couple of quid. I, I, I think he's. I, I wasn't. I'm paying for it. All pay per view over there. I, I, I can't see it being paid. I can't it. see it being paid for in the UK. I can't. Just for the time, and you know, it's a massive fight, but it says it all. Canelo's fight, you know, Canelo Golovkin will not be pay per view in the UK, so therefore, you know, this won't be either. Uh, times, you know, in terms of the big names, but are they going to draw in a massive, you know, crowd in the in the UK, you know, for pay per view? I can't see it personally. Might be wrong, but you know, with no outlet, it's going to take, you know, like a, a BT. To bid on it because I don't think Sky will with that exclusive deal, US deal they've got with Top Rank. So it's literally going to be BT or nobody else. I can't see who else is going to do it. But in terms of size, you know, you're right. I mean, the Cowboys owner. I mean, he's he just you know he's got money. He just got money everywhere. If he wants it, he's having it, and that will be huge. And of course, like as um, Steve described it. What was it, ring liquor in chief? You know, for a fact, when Eddie said something, uh, Mr. EB himself is going to be not too far behind supporting everything he says. Um, And just to say, you know, it will do more buys, purses, bigger gate. I I, I just can't see it. They're going to do Canelo Golovkin in Vegas, you know. Therefore, you know, if, if they're going outdoors, potentially with this Spence Crawford fight in a stadium, Gate bang already ticked. It, no, it's a that's huge the, fight. That's Matty, an indoor indoor stadium. Matt, you're raging that you could get us for free in the UK and you could fucking pump out seventy seventy or eighty dollars to pay yeah, for it. Yo, Andy, if they do this in if they do How this in you Dallas, pay for Castano? Uh that one was just regular showtime. So what are you paying for your regular showtime subscription? 
uh, like ten or twelve dollars a month. Uh, I go and the I, fuck well, and I lost. I watch a lot of Woo! movies on there and shit too. But no, this Beastie. is one of those fights. If they have this in Dallas with the, the amount of tickets that'll be available for it, it won't be like in Vegas where it's so limited. It's a pain in the ass. I would seriously consider going to this fight. I that's it would be on the list of things I would want to do this year. The the thing is as well is if they do it at the AT and T, what does it have as well? It's got a roof, so it doesn't even matter on weather time of year. They can do that. And all you need to do is when the Cowboys are away and there's no issues, you know, no issues about weather, nothing like that, no issue. The only other thing is I did wonder, do you think they'd do this in Vegas or not? I'm, I'm not so sure on that. Yeah, the casinos, because the casinos are good mm-hmm. They'll put the biggest site bid in, to be honest, so it would maybe, maybe be worth it. I, I don't but know. If there's a lot of money. He's going to want to kind of back up money. I don't know how much money. He's, he's a billionaire, obviously, in that. But this is a... Cl- match the casinos, then. Go to Dallas. Really. This is a lot closer to Omaha, too, though. I, I it, it brings in, in more of Crawford's fan base from home. It's If somebody had to drive him, mean, it's not a terrible drive from Omaha to Dallas. It's way better than Omaha to Vegas. Um, which is mm. God. It's it's probably about like the it, it, it about what it takes me to drive to Vegas is what it takes to drive to from Omaha to to Dallas. So that ain't too bad. Um, and it's, it's cheap, cheap flights, probably about twelve hours. My, yeah, my, my, Dallas to Omaha is a ten hour drive. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. About and you're saying that is re- that's reasonable. That's not too bad for Americans. There is no for Americans. It's not. Like, yeah, it's. Right. it's yeah, it's just it's insane. I mean, our country is the size of a continent. You know, you you take away yeah, Scandinavia, yeah. <laughs> you take away Scandinavia, and you know we're the size of Europe. Um, to be so, fair, I'm just just looking. Now. You can get a flight around a return flight for a couple of hundred quid, so mm-hmm. that's certainly doable. Yeah, some people. I think some people in uh, Terrence Crawford's fan base from Omaha though probably can't board airplanes. Oh, by the way, did you see Terrence Crawford on, on IG last night? Well, the guns and that fucking hell, it's, man. That's the, the, his, you know, it, God love him. He's moved on, but people from his past and shit like that. I don't know if they're all eligible to fucking board a fucking aircraft. Fuck, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, just, just possible. Uh, driving, yay, drive. <laughs> right. Sorry, we're on belly the beat here, Steve. Sorry, man. Yeah, no, you're okay. You're, you're gonna... <laughs> well, there Let's you go. Fun. I made a joke. The final few. Uh, Cordina, what a care from Cordina says Jim Ball chat perfect. Still got to be a belly of the week for that Connor Ben post fight comment. Apparently, what did he, he say? Ben, actually, I, he said, I think he said after. Ben's the most explosive puncher oh, in right, world right, boxing, right, or some, right. something along those lines. Someone clarified it for me because I didn't hear it either. I was expecting Ben to be on there, you know, sitting there with his fucking you know, legs spread, his balls hanging out, you know, just like de loosing himself, talking angry. Calling out some fucking dead body, he's going to fight and fight next, like Adrian Broner, for example. But that never happened. I was really disappointed. But we've got a legend in this place, Sir Joe of Kalzaghi. So was there. the fucking Welsh dragon was in attendance. The and greatest the way, British boxer of all time. Can I just time. say something? Can I just say something? The Welsh what? national anthem gets me a hard on by the way. I fucking love it. Love oh, Andy, it. it's a shame they didn't have Cleverly on there, man. Imagine the joy oh, he would have brought to the you imagine? Well, you're reading your passage for the Bible, just fucking smoking a big massive rock of wood bait, you know? I've never <laughs> paid out the cock out the Bible out all in one go. <laughs> I, I've never paid attention to the Welsh anthem. What is it? It is like about coal Land of and fathers, sheep. Mate. Land of her fathers, mate. No, no, listen. Oh, is that what they were playing? I thought we were uh, in Red I've, of Heaven or something. I can sing half it. I've tried to learn it. I'm not, I've, tried, I've tried to learn it. Eh? I fucking love it, man. There was a time, I remember, oh, digress very briefly, but Football game, Matty. Um, it got played. The fans who were singing it were out of tune with that actual song on the tannoy. So the t- so the MC cut off the tune and let the fans bring it home. It was epic, mate. Absolutely <laughs> fucking epic. When you let the fans bring it home, just give them a few bars, let them fucking sing, it, sing their hearts out. It was tremendous. Yeah, they know how to have a good time in Wales, it seems. Mm-hmm. Head to the next one. A final one, apart from a video that I have, Dominic Henry nominating Eddie. I would say Bivol is a big favourite against Baturbiev, says Eddie. Yes, uh, no, no doubt he would say that, old Eduardo. And the final one I have here is, tell you what, if Eddie's looking for some content on the zone, he could do worse. He loves the um, these uh, women fights. Chicks would dig, would definitely <laughs> dig these two Nigerian heavyweights. Get them on the zone ASAP, I say. <laughs>
That's the shout of God. Can this fight continue? Can this fight continue? Fuck's sake, the one, in, the one in the red trunks here, right, was a little like, had her ear, her chin in the air for like <laughs> every time she threw a punch. And she did, she had a brow on as well, by the because the tits were falling out. <laughs> <laughs> that one, the one girl she wasn't me a terrible. Juice, to be honest. That one girl wasn't terrible, the other one, it was it was a struggle, but uh, she, she's she got a lot of heart, you know, clogged arteries and all. Ah, oh, pish. <laughs> Shite, man. But Eddie, Eddie, Eddie is like, obviously he's burnt through a lot of his own cash. So that might be a cheap option for Eddie. Good evening to you, so. Uh, shout out to Tim Boxeo for providing that and the South African one as well. Always a good follow is Tim Boxeo and the Discord server as well seems to be going strong. So shout out to him. He listens to the pod. Good lad is Tim Boxeo. That's all the one that I've got for this week. Andy, do you have any nominations that you haven't already thrown in? Throw them in, so, you know. Just a couple, mate. Um, Javonte Davis, just for his funny, funny quip back to Ryan Garcia, the worst clout chaser. Down 20 grand last week on the fucking Gervonta Davis fight. He's obviously commenting on the Cambosis Haney snooze fest, as people like to call it. He says, Gervonta, are you watching this stuff? When we fight, don't let it be like this. Gervonta says, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, uh, Gervonta, he's no fucking about, man. He's no fucking about. Um, the Bella digging out Hearn, by the way. It's over the comments. That Hearn's on IFL uh, during the week. Maybe early half of the week. Basically criticising um, Haney's representatives, so it'll be like, say, you know, Lou, top rank, his dad really in that as well, you know what I'm saying, like, say, for example, you know, he's just, there's no promoter, there's no help, shall we say. So, <laughs> the Bellas come out and says, Haney has a team with him of the most experienced lawyers in the business and John uh, Hornover. I'm assuming that was the guy who got involved with his dad, right? They have his father, who's an astute guy, and his manager, and the kid, who's smarter than your average 23-year-old. And then you have top rank involved with his core promoter. So Eddie Hearn sits there and acts like people aren't adults, and aren't competent, and aren't intelligent enough. You demean them. Sitting there and acting like the kid isn't adequately represented because Eddie's not around and insulting everybody else. That is representing the kid. So Eddie's just been fucking dug out by Uncle Lou. And to be honest, by doing so, Lou never even swore once. I was fucking shocked at that one. So uh, one for Eddie there, just to kind of uh, sanction it off. And one for uh, Broner as well. He's coming back fighting Omar Figueroa, saying this shit was supposed to happen years ago, but I ain't complaining. See you all, Chicago. Yeah, you ain't complaining, bitch, because you need that fucking payday, you loser. So uh, hopefully Figueroa, I know he's washed. He's very prone to cuts, etc. He, he 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 sucks. Have, uh, yeah, he's got hand problems as well. Burns got jobbed off him in America and that as well. But uh, this is who Bronner's fighting on his comeback fight. So one for AB, mate. Oh, oh sorry. One for, can I mention as well, one for Cambosis for mm, that fucking yes. Sun Tzu shit. <laughs> I mean, dude, if you're going to, you know, you know, the art of deception, you don't fucking then spill the beans literally three seconds after saying so, you know. So, and by the way, make weight as well. Sorry, mate. No, no problem, Andy. Some good ones as always. Matty, any nominations from you, please? Yeah, Joe Tessator on the uh, the broadcast uh, speaking mm. uh, uh, said, uh, "Damian Lillard drove all the way down to Australia." <laughs> <laughs> I had to mute the Matty man. I can't stand Tessator. Oh, he's, he's a fucking muppet. Eh? Stand him. He's a dick. Yeah, that one was perfectly uh, uh, specifically idiotic. But uh, yeah, let's give one to Joe there. Good stuff. Thank you, Matty. Aussie, any from you, please? No, the Leeds guy was my only one. <laughs> the Ebb supporters getting thrown in there. Right, Andy, let's go over them quickly then, and then we'll decide who we're going to pick this week. So first of all, we had the Ebb, the Ebb's crowd of shame, Lee the bald guy and all the others. We had Leonard going in against Eddie. We had the Doctor going in on Joe Kennedy. We had uh, Michelle Phelps going into a haunted house. We had the uh, South African... A trainer fighting with the opposition member. We had uh, South Africa Trade talking about Russ. We had Arsenal nominating Eddie going on about the fight. And, oh yeah, we had Lucas Big Daddy Brown. I forgot about that one with Christopher Lovejoy. We had Everything Boxing, the Ringlicker in Chief. We had Jim Ball Chat nominating Connor, Joe Cordina for his Connor Bairn explosive puncher comments. And we had Dominic nominating Eddie for talking about Bivol. We also had Eddie singing. We had the Nigerian heavyweights. And we'll throw in Jim Bean Gray. We'll never forget. Quite the uh, quite the rundown there, Andy. Who are you going to go for this week? 
I was wanting to go for Eddie, but it's too easy for me to pick. People call say that I'm a hater of Eddie here, much is absolutely fucking true. But um, I'm going to go for the situation in South Africa, by the way. That was just complete shithousery of unk proportions. Uh, so, yeah, I'll go for the South African and get these fucking lights pushed. After winning the fight, celebrate in the corner of his opponent. And his trainer just took Omri's step and he said, that I'm going to swap hands here. So, fuck I, I'll go for that one. Michael Sidar now getting in and getting stuck in on Sith and Bezo. Matty, who are you going for? Episode 477. You know, I, I we'll go kind of the Eddie direction, but I'm going to go on the positive side of the street um, towards Leonard Allerby. And I got to give it Ooh. to Leonard for his, his wonderful, succinct ownage of Eddie uh, regarding all things Eddie in boxing. What was the personal comment Eddie made toward him then? Don't know. I would love know. to find out. If, he, if it's enough for you to phone him and say, listen to it. Come on. There's a fucking, you know, there's, you, you know yourself growing up, there's there's unwritten rules of the streets or whatever it is you're doing at the time or whatever game you're playing, whatever that, there's certain things you didn't say and you don't, you don't do. And those that do do step across that line, they get seen to during that said fucking thing as well. But Eddie does, does, does they learn, does they learn because he's been brought up on the soft side, where his dad was brought up on the hard side, so I would say. So he knew the streets. Eddie does now. Eddie thinks he knows them. Hinks being the fucking master banter chief and banter juice, so I tell you shite they likes to fucking pump it. Excuse me? Yeah. Fucking wanker a man, by the way. Can't wait till he's washed out of the sport, by the way. Can't I, wait. I, I think Eddie Eddie called him a fat buddy McGirt. <laughs> I mean, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? I mean, what, no, he, 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 didn't, he, he didn't. That's just an observation. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going with you, Matty, on Leonard Ellaby. I don't know whether he wins the award or Eddie wins the award, but one of them wins the award between the two of them because it was a succinct put down from Leonard. And at the I end, can... no messing around. Costa pro- pro- prompts him and he's like, I just stomp him out. <laughs> I can remember Floyd Mayweather uh, mentioning Lloyd F. Lloyd. Leonard Ellaby <laughs> when he first, first joined him. He says he actually left qu- a quietly. So a quite highly paid job to become whatever it was at that point with Floyd Mayweather to become CEO of the promotional promotional company to be involved with at least the big oh I think it's still the biggest pay per view event in boxing history at this point he's still involved with Showtime still making or still running about the periphery all these big fights get made on Showtime BBC yet Eddie can't even get Devin Haney an undisputed title fight against George Composis let that sink in for a fucking minute by but Leonard Elbey is doing numbers compared to fucking Eddie Hearn, but all his ass flickers will make you believe otherwise. There we go. Uh, two for Leonard and one for the South African trainer. Ozzy, who are you going for this week? Ebony and her gimpy fans, basically. <laughs> um, for me, me they're just drawers. an overwhelming... Hmm? Let me sniff your drawers. Well, she's probably but she's probably bribed them with used underwear to just happily put comments out like that in the public domain on a daily basis. So, Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> just put a fresh pair of pants I, on. I'll be squirting them. I, I, I think you got to go more on that that one for the fans because I think Ebony is profiting off of all this, holding events and shit like that. Like, uh, you know, don't hate the player, hate the game. They're the fucking simps. Oh, yeah. No, but she's up there as well. I'm sorry. No, begging for cars and... You know, encouraging all this. So, yeah, Ebony and her gimpy, fan, uh, gimpy fans. One for Ebony, one for the South African trainer. But the winner this week is Leonard Ellaby and Eddie Hearn for their altercation. Congratulations, Leonard. You are the Bellew of the Week for episode 477. And that is where we shall leave it this evening. We've had a good time, of always, as always. Some good fights next week, some bad ones as well. Perhaps we'll be back. Matty will be in the hot seat for episode 478 to review them. Let's have a quick look back over our super chatters before we get out of here to see who's thrown in the hard cash. We had, first of all, Dungino. Thank you to you, Ricky Graveal, Johnny Horsecock Nelson, Steve Anderson, Declan Graffin and Michael McElway. Very much appreciated. If you want to get in the call in this Saturday, join uh, patreon.com forward slash boxing asylum and we'll be glad to have you if you have something to say. If not, we'll catch you all again next Sunday evening, as I previously mentioned, for 478. Thank you to Andy for coming on. Thank you to Matty. Good to have Ozzy back with us. And thank you to rapping Rob Kelly for jumping in from the line on his way out to Greece. I've been Steve Wellings. We'll see you all again, same time, same place next week. Love you all. Hit the like button, subscribe and bye. 
we'll never forget. Yeah, I think that's good about me. Go to animals! We want to be honest, yeah. Crying like a little bitch. I've never met a fucking soul that can fight me. I, I fell asleep. I, I fell asleep. You're a fucking bum, you're a fucking asshole. Rump or fucking stealth skin. But allegedly, Oscar Rivas has, 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 failed, has failed a test. Seven year age. Seven year age. I will fucking smash. Fuck are you. I hope you fucking die. Be safe. I love boxing sounds. Simple as that.